Hello, welcome to a special Why Blank Lost interview with Survivor 41's Dr. David Voce, otherwise known as my winner pick. Yes. <laughs> uh, which, David, I hate to say you were not right, unfortunately. Um, who was more wrong, Jessica? Uh, oh, when, did, when did your winner go out, oh, Jessica? Oh, I oh, seem to recall who your winner pick was, Jessica. So this is how this is going to be. This huh? is how it's going to be. David, Damn it. you I were more right than Jessica. Ganged up on. That's right, that's right. We are the Davids. We just <laughs> exactly. got started. <laughs> Don't worry. There's a lot more to come, Jessica. Yeah. Oh, great. I mean, when we were on, when we when we were interviewing Tiffany, she immediately formed a women's alliance. You Listen. know. Oh wait, we're um, we're going. We're already going to Tiffany. We're already well, going to start on yeah. how this podcast is going to be about how much I love David Bloomberg and how much how wrong Tiffany was. Oh. Well, I mean, we I, I do think that we should start with. Um, the obvious question, which is, why do you love me so much? Why do I love you? That is a great question. So. And this is, so I, I will, I will give you the reason, David Bloomberg. Here it is. So the, when, when I went out there to play Survivor, they always ask you, are you going to win? And everyone, they want you to say, of course, I'm going to be the millionaire. Mm -hmm. And I would not give them that. Because I'm not an idiot. I'm not someone that's going to say, yes, of course, I'm going to win. This is mine. Because what I always would tell them is, this game is about skill and luck married together. But you have to have both of them married together. And you can't control the, the luck. But you can control the skill. And mm. you have to marry it together. So that's why, even though they had horrible clips of me in the preseason material, you never heard me saying, I'm going to win this, hands down. You never heard that. But it comes down to like the skill and how you're going to go into that being prepared, as prepared as you can be. You know, Rob Sesternino, I think he said at one point, he's like, you know, I'll take, you know, someone that's socially adept anytime over someone, you know, that, that comes in with a master plan. And you, I agree with him that you have to have social skill, but you also have to have a plan. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just depending on luck. And not to get too nitty gritty to this, but I'm a surgeon, as I've said many, many times, and as people make fun of me for saying but in the operating room, it's something that people think is commonplace is a checklist. And, you know, you see on TV when people say before the before of a surgery, right leg, we're doing the right leg. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't mm -hmm. until about 15 years ago that surgeons actually said we need a checklist in the OR. And it actually came from the aviation industry where they had in the 70s some horrible plane disasters and they now have all these checklists. And that's how the aviation industry revolutionized itself. It's how surgeons have revolutionized themselves to give them some sort of master plan. And so when I came into this, I was new to Survivor. And I said, I want to have some sort of rubric. I don't want to be in the preseason interview going, oh, what am I going to do? Oh, I'm just going to kind of, you know, be social. It's like, that's not an answer. I'm going to be social. It's like, you've got to like have thought through this. Like what happens when you get an idol? What is the most important thing? When someone says, do you want to be in my alliance? What is your answer going to be? And so the reason why I love you is because you just give a framework to play this game. It's not necessarily that every bullet point is right. It's not, I probably disagree with you on some of your bullet points. No, but uh, no, 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 okay. All right. This is <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he, he was just eating out of your hands there, Voce, until you got to that part. He was loving life. He's like, look at me. I made the master plan. Do you realize that, David Bloomberg? You made the master plan for yes, survival. Yes, yes, I did. That's crazy. All yeah. right, you can go on. <laughs> <laughs> Should I go on to my uh, preseason reading material and ponder? Uh, yeah, well, I didn't mean, really mean to interrupt <laughs> you. Okay. You know, I mean, it was, uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, we kind of just jumped right into this interview. I'm assuming everybody knows who you are. Um, maybe we should uh, roll it back just a minute and, yeah, talk about your your introduction to Survivor and, you know, your preseason reading material and anything else of that nature uh, to just, you know, get us to that point. Sure. Sure. So neurosurgery is a long road. I'm, I'm still in at the end of my training right now. And I took some time off to do some research. And in that research time, I actually had time to actually work out. And I started doing a lot of cardio and I had never, I had seen survivor as a kid, maybe like one or two episodes, but I was never a survivor fan. And I was looking for things to distract myself while I was mindlessly on the cardio machines. And, first choice was Star Trek. 
maybe a little nerdy, but there you go. Oh, Got God, downloaded Paramount. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, sorry, Jessica. I should have said this. I should have said this, not this. You know. um, I watched all of the season of whatever Star Trek it was, and then there was a little box that said Survivor. And one of my friends is a huge Survivor fan. He has been telling me for years how many times he's been applying, wants to be on. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a go. It was David versus Goliath. Mm-hmm. Another reason to love David's. Um, <laughs> watched it, and I instantly was just thinking, this is my life. Dealing with crazy people from all different backgrounds, mm. all different walks of life, and watching them live and coexist together and try and live in some sort of harmony. And I was like, I can do this. And so I instantly got addicted and just started watching seasons. I think I watched 36, 37, th- uh, and 35, you know, all. And I said, I could do this. And my friend was applying. So I sent in the video and heard right back. And basically they said, you're great. We'd love you. You need to watch a lot more Survivor. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, like, loved, I love the fact that they say that because, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. Survivor yeah. used to just pick out, uh, I think Rob calls them actors, you know, the yeah. model actors, you know, find yeah. someone in a bar and, and grab them. And now it's great that they're telling you yeah. watch more. Yeah. yeah. No. And it's very clear. Like they, um, I had Penny Clifton, who's amazing, who is like, yes. you know, right now we're casting for 39. We think 39 is filled. We'd love you for 40. And so <laughs> watch, watch for 40, 40 came and she calls and is like, you know, 40 is not an option this year. She's like, really watch survivor. So when I go into something, I go all in. So between, <laughs> I think that was like December, January, when they were casting 40, and July, I watched all 40 seasons. And <gasps> I started wa- listening to all the podcasts. I started listening to the Why Blank Loss before Jessica and after Jessica. Mm-hmm. I ah. went back to the evolution of strategy, all of that. So I just like immersed myself. Nice. And then the application process went again and went to finals, did all that stuff, was set to go out to Fiji and then of course, COVID happened mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I got thrown back into um, the clinics. Didn't think I was going to be able to actually make it out. Um, it was actually probably a good thing that that break happened because I was so immersed in survivor, 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 that it was kind of good to have that chill off here. Yeah. Um, and then that took me to when we actually ended up launching for season 41. Amazing. And did your so friends- So one time <laughs> applicant, Yeah. I say 1.5 because that first time yeah. with um, with season 40, I applied super late. I applied in like December and mm-hmm. that's when I got the call right away. And she was like, they've already casted 39. They're casting 40. Mm-hmm. And then she reached out again in, Ju- in the next July for that's um, awesome. 41, 42. And, and does nice. your friend, did your friend stop speaking to you since your friend had been applying <laughs> so, multiple so times? So I actually did not tell him when <gasps> the first time when I was supposed to fly out. And I was like, are you still applying for that stupid survivor show? <laughs> and I was like, Silly. That's so silly. Silly And I was like, I got cast. I was like buying all these clothes. I was trying to buy shorts in Chicago in the winter. I was like, he's like, why do you need shorts? Um, But after when I when it got canceled and everything, um, I finally told him. I was like, I actually got cast for the show. He's like, what? You (gasps) don't even watch. Was he so mad? He was. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I would I would make fun of him for listening to podcasts. I'm like, you listen to Survivor podcasts? I'm like, what in the world? Who wastes their time doing that? Oh gosh, that's amazing. He that poor guy. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. He's he's a, he's a good guy and he's probably going to listen to this and he's probably going to hate me even more. Yeah. That's okay. You didn't say his name though. Yeah. There was no not. name dropping. Yeah. It was yeah. just a friend. No. Chris, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. Well, you know, you just never know what they're going to be looking for. So many people have asked me, well, what can I do? And I, I tell so many people who are trying to get on the show, you just, you have to give them a reason to look at you, but you also have to be genuinely yourself. Yeah. And that's because if you're trying to be something you're not, they're going to see right through that. Mm-hmm. And exactly. that's why I think that they're so great at casting because that's what they're looking for. That genuine person. They're not, they don't want actors anymore. Yeah. You know, they do want real people. And I, yeah. I think the real people are the best people that they put on those shows, especially the ones that are survivor lovers. So yeah. I love that you were so immersed into yeah. it before you and went I, out there. Yeah. I think off of that, because a lot of people I'm sure like you get questions all the times about like, what about, what are they looking for? And it's mm-hmm. like, 
being a kind of a bold person or bold mm -hmm. character and knowing how to tell that story and yes. realizing that they don't care if you're the first boot or you're the winner. They no. do not care who wins. It's no. like, even though we talk about all the strategy and all the wrong moves, they don't care at all. They want, no, they want to show, of, they want exactly. to show and they want right. people that are going to help exactly. create that show. So yeah. yeah, I think that, so too bad for your friend, but yeah. good for you. <laughs> Maybe the friend can still make it on. Chris, That's true. You can do it. I, I, I've helped him tweak his yeah. video a little bit. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, let like me needs help a little you. bit of work. Yeah. Let me help you. I love this. So, all right. So you went through all that. And then um, uh, you were you were talking about, you know, that there was the framework that you had yeah. found with us here. And then I Oh, you don't have to give me credit. Off. This is before yeah. me. It's fine. No, it's fine. You, you, you created the post. You helped create I, the poster. I did with create Eric. the poster. I just I stole your so. rules to create the poster. And I, I'll, okay. I'll say this. Like you guys are a good team because Aww. David, I love you. David, you're right. <laughs> but you can go on a little intellectual tangent. <laughs> so Jessica is like so you're a good balance. Jessica's like good. the real. Bring him back down. So right? you're saying yeah. Jessica's anti-intellectual? Is that what you're saying? No, no, <laughs> I would never say that. Listen, David, there's a. This is you're not right. teaming yeah. up on Jessica today. No, no, no. Okay, you're absolutely right. Okay, well, you right. two you're teamed funny. up on uh, you and you and Tiffany, Jessica teamed up on David the other we day. We did so. not team up on David. Uh, mm, okay, mm, mm. No, um, but, I think David walked into a lot of that himself. Well, it's possible, yeah. uh, but. But it is funny that you say I could get a little too intellectual because I don't know for anyone who saw the podcaster, RJP podcaster mafia game. So I was in that. And the reason that I got killed off was because someone, another podcaster obviously said something and I immediately went into podcaster mode and started correcting her and being like, well, no, the way you're saying that, that doesn't really make sense. And it only makes sense to this. And the other people are looking at me like, why is he, why is he attacking her? What is he hiding? What is he doing? And it just, I, I mean, I was a bad guy, uh, but, mm. um, but it wasn't until afterwards that I was like, yeah, I totally know why that happened. I clicked into just yeah podcaster mode e explaining things and that this was a game what the hell are you doing you know yeah, yeah see i wasn't there to right keep you in check so next right. time we'll have to make next sure time we teams. yeah well right. it was funny because the person uh the woman that i was talking to her podcasting partner led the charge against me so <gasps> even though you know so uh so, mm. i mean I, you know i totally next time david errors. we'll get him that's next right. time that's right yeah um, but anyway, uh, back to Voce, <laughs> back to Voce. Back to, <laughs> yes. Um, so go ahead. Uh, finish what you were saying about uh, how how smart I am. I, I mean, uh, how, no, we, how may, we could get <laughs> this to. is insane. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. You see, Voce has no idea what you're talking like, about. Know. You've completely thrown like, him off. Voce's like, was I really just saying <laughs> yeah. how what? Like, yeah. yeah, you've completely thrown him off. <laughs> Unbelievable. L let's just remind everyone out there that the brain surgeon of the three of us yes. is Voce. So, yes, that's a good point. you know, if anyone's that really is... looking as to who is the smartest person here, I think well, Voce wins. But, but, but who, who has survived the longest on Survivor out of these three? <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah. Okay. And was never voted off. That's I true. just I picked a rock. Hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Not good. But anyway. So anyway, going on. okay, going back to your preparation, you were talking about uh, you know, the podcasts and everything. Yeah, no, and it's um I don't when you're when you're sitting there thinking, you know, you have a pretty good you usually have a pretty good idea if you're gonna go out or not. Some people mileage may vary, but I had a good idea that I was chosen, was gonna go out, and mm -hmm. then you get the call. You want people are like, what do I do? You know, you can read Reddit, AMAs, things like that. But really, it was like, I just want to have something that I can think about on the island when I'm out there and be like, am I kind of playing a game that is reasonable? It's mm -hmm. like, you know, you're going to have to make split second decisions that aren't, that are just a gestalt, what seems right. Mm -hmm. But when you have time to think through things, do I have a framework? And also just like how to deal with an idol, like you, you're the framework that you give. Or, or when someone asks, you, do you want to be in an alliance? It's like when I was asked, do you want to be in an alliance? When Evie came up to me and said, do you want to go final too? I was like, 
you're full of bullshit right now. And I said, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I will go to the final two with you. You know, it's like, it was like Always a knee-jerk reaction. Yes. It's like, yes. do not pause. Yes. Um, and so things like that, I think are helpful to have. Um, and so that's why, uh, you know, you mentioned, I think on the podcast before that, you know, we had two weeks of miserable quarantine where mm. they, um, they bag checked us to make sure you don't have any contraband material. And I was able to print on the back of a science journal your rules, your 25 page rules or whatever. The first like two or three pages were double sided science. And then it went into your rules and then more double sided science. This is and incredible. I still remember the lady, the, the bag check lady picking up being like, oh, opens it. And I was like, oh no. She's like, oh, this is intense. Puts it down. <laughs> like, Success! I was Made like, it. Richard Hatch may have done matches of his butt. I managed to get Bloomberg's rules. I love yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Now, Rob, uh, when he went, he just took my rules. Apparently, they weren't prohibiting it then. Yeah, they uh, um they had this big thing where they, they wanted no survivor material at all. Hmm. Anything that indicated that we are a survivor was kind of the rule. Ah, okay. Yeah. I was just okay. worried about personal things that I had hidden in my luggage, but, yeah. you know, I had no survivor <laughs> rules. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting bag check when you're like, God oh, damn, are they gonna I know. Find yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's just it's just awkward. Well, I will say this is one of my neuroticisms is that I when I pack a huge bag, I have to have packing cubes, you know, like every oh, okay. organized into like zipper cubes. So I've got like a zipper cube for my pants, zipper cube for my shorts, <laughs> zipper cube for my underwear. They open my bag and the lady goes, Oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> and I was like, Yes, and she's like Thank God. She's like, because everyone's bringing, you know, like oversized, oversized suitcases and they right. take everything out like piece by piece. And they're like, this is the easiest bag check we've ever done. No, Meanwhile, like, you're the one smuggling in contraband. <laughs> to like, oh, look at this guy. He's so great. And you're like, mm -hmm -hmm. No so, so the other, so the other thing that they go through is they open up all your bottles and like in typical medicine fashion i just have a bunch of random pills all jumbled in a bag like i have Typical tylenol medical fashion. Well, no, i mean i just have like tylenol advil sudafed benadryl everything but it's not in separate bags it's like one big bottle just mixed <laughs> and i had thrown out my neck and they take the bottle and they dump out all the pills and it's just like a rainbow of pills <laughs> dumped out on the pillow and they're like uh what is this <laughs> And I think the flask that it was in was like an old antibiotic or something. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Those are all just like over the counter. And so they had to actually go and ID each pill. So they oh would my. like pull up the, an app and the doctors would actually go up and like ID each pill. And one of them was like Kirkland brand. So it wasn't like the actual pill. And they were like, we don't know if we can give you this. I'm like, just take it, whatever. But yeah. it was, it was very, they're like, no one else has a bottle just full of pills. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Another interesting tidbit for future Survivor players. <laughs> if you will go on there, I was like, hmm, I sometimes have some acne. And so I'm going to do just some little acne medicine. But then I was like, but when you have acne medicine, you need like lotion, right? Mm. Oh. And sunscreen lotion. And I was like, so I'm going to put in some like Cetaphil lotion, nice face lotion and stuff. And then I'm going to put in some wash stuff and all that stuff. I put that in my bag and I put because of acne and they approved it. So on the island, all the girls open up, you know, the, the med box at Coconut Tree or whatever. And they're like, how in the world does he have lotion on, <laughs> on the island? How in the world does he have SPF? So that's there's, incredible. There's ways. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had a um, prescription lotion that disappeared from my, my med kit. And I'm like, yeah. um, excuse me, that is a prescription. I would like it back, please. Because I was having all my eye infection. And so yeah. like my eyes were really dry and I wanted my lotion. And they gave it back to me. So I also are, <laughs> I have my prescription lotion, but they did initially take it away. You are my eye buddy. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. Having an eye infection on an island is not fun. Yes, yours was terrible, that's, right? Yeah, that's why all the preseason content that fed into it was like, why does War Dog was like Dr. Death because of the way I looked at all my pictures. Literally the camera guys were like, we need you to open your eyes. <laughs> If you if you go back to the cast photo and you zoom in on my face, I look like a like morphed animal because they yeah. photoshop my eyes open because yeah. I because of the infection that I had in my eye because I had LASIK surgery like an idiot four weeks before 
Um, yeah. I could not open my eyes out with her. So they put me on all these drugs and everything. And That's so. awful. Yeah, yeah when luckily, we were doing our cast photo, they were trying to like make me tilt my head a certain way to like try to hide my eye. They were like, <laughs> oh, you poor girl. Can you just, can you just a little bit more? I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> it's awful. It was awful. It's terrible, terrible. Well, well, luckily Tiffany said you can tell everything with your eyebrows. So you don't need so your actual <laughs> eyes, just your eyebrows. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany, for that <laughs> wonderful thing. My eyebrows were a very sensitive topic, and actually, is part of the reason why I was probably cast. When they, um, ah. when they, during casting, they asked, "What are you most afraid about on the island?" And my response to this was, "I'm most afraid of my unibrow growing in, because that is the legit fear that I had. Because of middle school, I didn't know that tweezers existed, and I." what you know went around with one brow so after that happened and they were like oh we that was like one of the best answers ever they were uh jody winchesky who no longer works there but she uh she said you know you can get laser and i was like what laser and so casting afterwards they're like did you get laser and i was like yes i got laser down them but then covid canceled my appointment so it wasn't so <gasps> then then tiffany was like well on the island, we'll make sure that we pluck whatever's there so you don't have a unibrow on national television. Oh, so. <laughs> see, she, she took being, good care of you. She does. And, you know, it's a, we, T Tiffany and I have a weird relationship. You know, we talk to each other each day. Um, but, I mean, we poop together. I was just going to say, things. are we going to talk about the pooping? Because that we was We can talk thing. about the pooping. You know, <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Tiffany is a ball of energy, a ball yeah. of, you know, and I, I, I can play on that. Um, she's loud. I'm loud. She doesn't care. I don't care. Um, and the, the pooping thing came about because aqua dumping is by far the easiest way to, uh, you know, do your duty. Um, but uh, she, uh, we were going to a challenge and they were like, we don't have time for you guys to both go aqua dump. And we're like, we'll just do it together. And they're like, no, because <laughs> you, 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 you can't be on camera while you dump. And so, you know, and we're like, we won't talk. We won't do anything. So we go out there and we're aqua dumping and it's fine. But she's further down or she's, in a position so that it's more whatever. So that I gave her the graceful. You, you gave know, her more. the deeper end. Exactly. But then the tide comes out or rolls out. And I'm like, Oh God, tide goes out. I'm standing there butt ass naked. <laughs> she looks back. I'm like, don't look back. And then Liana comes and Liana's looking out and she's like, Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, thanks guys. That was like on day one. That was a, that was a big moment. <laughs> it was a big moment. But so while we're on bodily functions, let me tell you. Yes. So, Taking a, taking taking the dump at all at night is like a no no because you just don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes nature calls, and so you'll try and take some fire and go away. Tiffany, in the middle of the night, will walk one step from the shelter and start peeing, and it's like <laughs> the wind blows, and it's like, what is that miss, Tiffany? <laughs> Tiffany, why are you peeing one foot away from my face? And she's like, I can't go in the dark. It's like Tiffany. You're literally one feet away, one foot away. <laughs> That's incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I, now we know why make, they never, you got to make it work, right? You just got to yeah. make it work. You now we know why they, they never showed the shelter, you know, exactly. really. Oh, <laughs> oh, our shelter. I mean, so Jessica, I don't know if you can comment on this, but you know, Tiffany was making fun of the machete. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. Our machete would not cut any bamboo. And they said it was dull. We would sharpen that thing. We just gave up on cutting bamboo at all. We were like, we have no idea how people cut bamboo with these things. Yeah, they, they don't give you a good machete yeah. for sure. <laughs> it's it was tragic. Definitely not. To... It was tragic. It is, it is interesting, too, because one thing that I don't think people have really, I don't even know if it's been discussed. Maybe it has been and I've missed it. But the bamboo doesn't come from the island oh oh, oh wait 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 wait, 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 while we're on this jessica so we're walking around the forest and picking up the uh you know the bamboo and i'm go oh you know survivor gods nicely survivor gods it. have brought some bamboo yes and the tribe goes huh this bamboo is from here i'm like guys look up and they're like wow he's so smart i'm like Look around. Where did this come from? Right. This, like, there's no, no bamboo no. trees. That's why they voted wow. you out because you were too smart. You knew where bamboo came from. No, there's that. That is not the reason why they voted you out. There's that. Okay. Well, and hold on. This is the reason. Gods, too. You know, there is the reason. This is why oh. you lost. Uh -huh. Oh, it's David. No. It's his fault. No. He no. created the master plan that you followed. 
Fall. Mm, so there. Um, Wait, but before maybe I it was this. Point, maybe the, it was the, this. If, this is why. <laughs> yes, I would. I would. I would tend to agree with you. Yes, no Jessica. more advantages. Thank you, David Bloomberg. While we're on, you're welcome. Yes, that was. Uh, you know, the the funny thing about the CBS, uh, the CBS Survivor Shop, is they allow you to personalize stuff. Mm-hmm. And they don't oversee how you personalize. Oh, that's that's actually from this the Survivor is, store. That is yes, from, yes. Oh I, that my is goodness! My you see that? To Jessica, there's a the little. That is you know, amazing. That is the real deal. Wait. And so for the people added, that don't watch the video, no more Jessica advantages. is wearing a official Survivor shirt that says "No more advantages." Around it is official. It. Is yes. No more that advantages. That is amazing. Yep. <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm. So. Another Coconut Grove little tidbit from you guys. I'm not sure if you guys have heard this, but, you know, women are allowed to have hygiene products in their Coconut Grove thing. And that water challenge that I participated in was very, very aggressive. Mm. And after walking that water challenge, my thighs were bloody mess. Oh, I did hear this. They were just dripping blood because of all the chafing from the salt water. And I'm sitting there and Tiffany goes like, why is he complaining so much? And I was like, don't complain. That's annoying. But literally just blood. And like oh, at this no. point, I'm just in, in boxers with blood going down. And so Liana and Tiffany go and they hand me a maxi pad. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? And they're like, <laughs> put it on. Put on the maxi pad. So I put it on and it was amazing. <laughs> it was like instant comfort. <laughs> but. But wait. The- Wait, wait, wait. I, you put it on? Where did you put it on? You just like, I, there's I, random fact, there's adhesive on, on these pads. Well, the, I, I know like, there's what? adhesive, but so, it was your size, right? Yeah, but so I adhesed it to like the crotch of the underwear. Oh, I yeah. see. And so it's like okay, this like I'm baby soft them. thing on, on it felt amazing. <laughs> so then fast forward and we get to the first challenge and you know, you do med checks where each person goes with the doctor. So I walk in and I'm like, I still have like blood on my thighs. And, she's and like, maxi pads there? stuck to your underwear. And maxi pads. <laughs> and so the doctor is like, drop the drawers. I drop the drawers. She's like, oh, we can put cream. And she's like, what is in your underwear? And I go, <laughs> it's a maxi pad. And she goes, what? And she's like, you can't wear that. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? Why not? She's like, if it falls out during a challenge, it'll like ruin the shot. She's like, no, you cannot wear the maxi pad. She's like, give me the maxi pad. <laughs> So I'm standing there, my underwear's down, my manhood is all out. There's a maxi pad in my underwear. And so I take off this bloody maxi pad and I hand the bloody maxi pad to, to our doctor, Dr. May. And I'm like, here you go. And she goes, this is one of the most awkward situations I've ever had. So. Oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> Maybe that's really what happened with JD. He didn't oh have the clue God. hanging out. He also had the maxi pad oh, idea. Lord. That was would have been a good out. cover. Yeah. She took away your maxi pad. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very sad, sad day. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, that's incredible. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry about your thighs, but that's a funny story. <laughs> yeah, it, it's one for the ages. Yeah. <laughs> And, you, and now you can appreciate maxi pads. I, I, oh, I am full support of the maxi pads. <laughs> <laughs> they are amazing. Amazing little products. I never knew their properties. <laughs> oh, my word. That was incredible. The things you learn on Survivor and in Survivor interviews. That's so, right. This is an another, educational podcast. So it's very. I, I went up to Dr. May because I had a couple of wounds on my feet. And I was soaking them in the ocean water because, you know, salt water heals everything, right? Mm. And she, Dr. May literally goes to me. She's like, you're a doctor. We're in the <laughs> tropics. It's hot. The water's like 80 degrees. You're like having so much bacteria in all of your wounds. She's like, you cannot be in the water. I'm like, what? She's like, how have you not heard of this? I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you're like, because I'm a brain surgeon, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Would you tell people to put their brain in salt water? Oh my word! Oh my goodness! It's, you are exposed to things that you would never think. It's like, like, oh, I have to deal with this now. I mean, like, we had a whole discussion with production because somebody took a dump like on one of the trails somewhere, and they were like, "Time out! This is not allowed." <laughs> like, w- was her name Tiffany? I was waiting. Very familiar. I was so. There were no rules with Tiffany. Yeah. 
Well, I do think it's funny because, and, and listen, there's a lot of poop discussion happening, but I'll, I'm going to jump in here too. There was this whole like plan when, when, it, like when we merged, like that's where you, that's where you aqua dump or that's where you poop. And like, they were all trying to like control. I'm like, I'm going to go wherever the hell I want because it's going to be far away from all of you. And I'm not going to go to the same place everybody else is going to because Everyone else is going there, right? Yep. So I went and found my own locations to take care of that. I'm like, I am not following the crowd to the communal aqua dump being ground. Like, this is not Actually, happening. speaking of that, one of the best successes I had with finding crabs was peeing in holes. And the crabs <laughs> would come out, running out, and then I would get them. And also, so we're going to start. I, I, I took notes on the last podcast that Tiffany did <laughs> in terms of like, the the fallacies, the rumors, the the heresy that she was saying. Wow, she was like, she, this is aggressive. She's like, I was the one finding all the crabs. False, false, <laughs> false, false. <laughs> Tiffany, maybe after I left, she was finding all the crabs, but I don't think that her rate went from zero point zero percent to finding all the crabs. If if her track record for five days was anything to tell about it. Interesting. I mean. Maybe she learned from you. Maybe. Maybe. She peeing in holes. And they no, she's just peeing there. under the shelter. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, we got to talk. Yeah. We gotta, we're going to have to talk about this peeing by the shelter thing. Like, what is happening? Oh, my yeah. goodness. All right. Well. Um, <laughs> we just went, like, way far out there. Yes. Yes. And that's fine. Hey. So, let's. Let's wind it back a little bit or all the way back oh. um and so we've we've heard about your survivor backstory we heard about um you know how you found us and everything but you also mentioned my name in pretty much every interview which of course you know i just hate that his I, ego I just hate, yes actually do you see what all my his notes, questions are my centered notes, around my notes himself. for this question say that fed my ego um <laughs> And, uh, but of course, please explain you... to me why you love me. Yes. Let's yeah. talk about me. Yeah. What well, about no, me? I just want to know if you were doing it. So you would be my winner pick, you know? I mean, no, because you guys jinx people. Well, well it's more true. Jessica than, than I you, do. But... I fully yeah. acknowledge. I apologize to Sarah. But when I picked her, I said, I am so very sorry. And look what I did to the poor girl. So, yeah. <laughs> no, but so. I mean, when you're doing those interviews, you know, it's, a, a couple of things. One, it's easy to come across like overprepared, overconfident, things like that. But I think that it's important to, to like say like this is what distinguishes me from mm -hmm. other people, and like mm -hmm. how does your strategy make sense? One of the things that from from the preseason material that uh, I would say kind of sucks from my part is like I kept saying like the skill plus uh, or strategy plus luck, mm -hmm. you know, marrying those two together, and that it's not just you have to. My, my my idea going into this is you need to have a strategy locked down and it can't be some nebulous thing. And right. then you need some social acumen, some social wit, and then some luck. And you need those married together. Mm. But, um, you know, I think people, you know, down through time, you've had people where you're like, what are you doing? Why are you making this move? And, you know, it's moves that are repeated over and over and over again, mm -hmm. where, you know, people, it's like, why? You, you, you hear people being like, you know, Will you vote with me? No. Will you be yeah. in my alliance? No. Yeah. It's like no. The answer is never no. Right. You know, and it's yeah. it's for those mistakes that are mistakes that you're not caught in those those errors. You can't control so much in Survivor, but there right. are things that you can control, and so why not try to control those things that you can control so that hopefully luck's on your side and you can actually go further than what you could if you didn't have a sound strategy. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing I'll say, what really prompted this, I think, was listening to the preseason interviews. I think it was for 38 or 39. And I was like yelling in the gym listening to these preseason interviews when people were like, so what's your strategy? And it's just like, well, I'm going to, you know, try and go in and make a lot of friends. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to be, you know, you know, the happy go lucky guy. And it's like, that's not really a strategy. Right. You know, that that's the, there's, I mean, sure. Like I want to, you know, be, again, you want to be social, but like unlayer that, what does that actually look like? Like, what right. does it actually look like uh, played out? And I mean, that's easy for me to say when 
you know, I'm in the third boot. And then it's like, look how that turned out. But I will say that it's not like when people look at my game, I don't think people say like, oh, there was a big error that I made, you mm-hmm. know, right off mm-hmm. the bat um, that, that, right. that really tanked me. So. Yeah. Well, and, and that's yeah. the that's the thing that David and I talk a lot about when we are listening to people's preseason interviews and and the strategies that they're coming up with is that you can go into it with a plan. But yeah. the plan can only take you so far because you yep. can't control other people. You can't control yep. other people's yep. plans and what they want to do because everyone is coming in with a plan to make themselves right. benefit and right. bring themselves farther in the game. And so you're kind of stuck with yeah. whoever you end up with. And if it doesn't align properly with what they want, yep. then your strategy is out the window. Yeah. And the other, and what you have to always keep in mind is that people are not rational. You yeah. Know, people yes. do not, you know, it, it's, it's, and that's, that's something that I think being in medicine, you know, it's like you, you say right now, like I would never subject my loved one to endless amounts of treatments if there were zero chance of survival. And yet I see it every day where people make irrational decisions because they're emotional and, you know, they, uh, I'm, I'll say torture their loved one, but it's because there's emotions involved right. and they're not making logical decisions. But right. that's what you have to be able to deal with is people that are not rational, people that are mm-hmm. emotional, people that are doing things that don't make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not a reason for you not to do things that don't make sense. Right. 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 Yeah. And I think that is the hardest part is um, whether it's, you know, in day to day life or even more so on survivor is yes, you come in, you are making the rational choices, but then you look across and they are making an irrational choice yeah. for reasons you don't understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, and you're like, I, I, how do I deal with that? Yeah. And it's, it, it is just something you have to deal with, whether it's, yeah at your normal work or at survivor. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, what uh, you talked about, okay, you, you came in, you had to have a plan. And so the plan was basically the rules. It was the rules. And then it was also, uh, so people ask why in the world do you come in saying you're a neurosurgeon, right? That was going to be my next question. Actually, Yeah. And you know, people, (laughs) so I thought about it and it was like, do I, I could make up some thing about being a nurse, something like that. But m- who I am through and through is my, my life has been about neurosurgery from my dad mm. dying of a brain tumor <laughs> to, I didn't come from a medical family. You know, I didn't come from a family that, you know, was with most of my peers m- and most people in neurosurgery came from very, I would say very well off families mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. they were kind of bred to do this. And that was not my story. You know, it was one kind of grassroots that kind of pulled myself through undergrad, med school, all these things. And it's been kind of this winding journey. And that's who I am. And I think a lot of times that's what people are attracted to. Um, And so I would be telling so many lies that Mm. people would pick up that I was not being authentic. And so it's like, you know, like, yeah, there's stigmas with neurosurgery, but at the same time, like you you have to mitigate, you have to choose your battles. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I am not going to go in with, you know, why have I not had a significant relationships? Why am I old and, you know, you know, doing all these things, you know, my life is explained by neurosurgery. Mm-hmm. And so there, I would be lying so much about everything. Why am I moving, you know, every three to four years across the country in different places, you know? And so I, I just, I thought I, I need to keep this clean because otherwise oh, yeah. it's going to be messy. And, you know, I'll even say, you know, Evie, I knew she was lying on day two about mm. not having a, I was, cause she was talking about her work, her research with me. And I was like, this sounds very technical. And then she told me where she worked. And I, one of my best friends went to Harvard dental school. And I was like, that's the Broad Institute in where Harvard is in Boston. And I was like, I got kind of this like weird, what are you hiding type of thing from her about, you know, or, you know, come to find out later that she was a PhD. And so I, I think I would have just been very caught in that. Yeah. Um, in, in all those lies. Yeah. I do think that you had such an intense cast. There yeah. were so many people that had like incredibly intellectual jobs or they were in very yeah. intellectual fields. I was very, very surprised just to see how like I, it was, it just seemed to be like a, I don't, I don't want to say it was like, 
super duper smart or anything, but, but it was like, it was such an interesting dynamic yeah. to see so many people having these crazy gigs I've never even heard yeah. of. And they're like, I mean, you're a brain surgeon, insane, but then all of these other like jobs that these people had, and I was blown away yeah. by just the intellectual component of the cast yeah. itself. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, people kept getting surprised, viewers at least on Twitter, kept getting surprised when Xander would say something smart. And it's like, yes, he acts like kind yeah. of a woohoo. He's at the University of Chicago yeah. doing computer programming. Right. No. Like he's super smart. And he's and creating think, apps and stuff. Yeah. And you know, that, that's kind of part the backstory is I we actually ran into each other at the gym mm -hmm. before, before we were mm -hmm. actually out there. Um, but you know, that's actually, this is a whole different discussion, but, you know, people, there's all the talk about why Xander was a zero vote finalist and everything, and they're kind of confused by that. And I think what the edit really did not show is we did not see him as a goofy kid. He mm. was, he came across very intellectual, very almost like, who is this kid? Yeah. Uh, you know, at the tribal council where I was voted out, he learned from Christian Hubicki, he was like, distract people by telling some long esoteric story. And so he told this insane story about cobras in India that literally took like 10 minutes to the point where Jeff was like, stop talking. <laughs> like, this is horrible. Um, and so people were just very confused by him because of this intellectual kid that he is um, mm -hmm. and who he really is. And so I think that's one of the kind of almost the, the splits that you don't really see in the edit, because I think the edit kind of almost has him more being like a Joe um, than, than anything. Whereas really the, the shit that he would say was just like, what, who are you? I mean, you're like the oldest 20 year old ever. And I really do not think that that came across. Mm, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people missed that, you know, yeah. that, that when they were watching. So, yeah. um, I mean, given, so you mentioned, and this was something I was going to bring up. Did you realize that you had run into each other like right away? Or was it only after you started talking once you were on tribes that, or so, on the tribe? Yeah. So when we were doing the water challenge, Mm -hmm. So I was so pissed off at that water challenge. Like, yeah, I did not want to do that. I was like, I was just cursing under my mouth. And like, we started and I just took off running. You saw me like stripping my clothes. I'm like, I do not want to talk to this fool right now. I'm just like, need to get my head straight on. And I wasn't going to show him that I was pissed off. But I was like, I just need to get this sorted out. So we start passing each other. And then finally, we take a break in the water and we start talking. And that's when he's like, I live in Hyde Park. And I'm like, I lived in Hyde Park. And it's like, where do you live? You go there, I go there. And then we realized like our lives were actually very similar. And he was a really cool guy. Um, so it was really that first water challenge. And honestly, that water challenge, I, I, I will say, is what screwed me over through and through. Because I, I had zero intention of aligning with Xander in the mm -hmm. beginning. But it was kind of that, you know, the entire first day we were doing that insane challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we got done at sunset and then we come in and the tribes all, you know, done what they've done and it's nighttime and we're just yeah. exhausted, like crippled over from, I mean, literally I've never had full on body cramps. Bleeding like that thighs. Before. Bleeding thighs. Yeah. Um, you know, Tiffany makes fun of me. She's like, oh, Boche would, would sit there and like, look at his foot. It's like, my foot was a bloody mess. What do you want me to look at? It's like, for some reason, Xander and I decided to wear socks during that challenge in the sand and mm. our socks just ripped and blistered. Oh so, yeah. Lord. It was yeah. also, I, I, let me just get air, air my, air my grievances with that <laughs> challenge. So we get out there and we start doing it. And this is, you know, we do that water challenge and it's before we'd been to camp. There was no water. There was no sunscreen. There was nothing. And we start going by the producers and we're like, can we get some water? And like, oh, we're like, how was this not thought of? So then they're like running to get water for us, running to get sunscreen. It was like, wait, this was not thought of? Oh, my it was word. Like, they're, I mean, the production is very impressive. And so <laughs> that part we were They like, just had a long happening? vacation. They weren't, you know, fully yeah. into it yet. Mm. So. <laughs> Um, crazy. Yeah. I think we, had, we had Rick Devins on the first episode yeah. podcast and he talked about how horrible that must've been. Cause he recognized the path. And I think Jessica, you may have recognized that, yeah. that area as well. And he was like, mm -hmm. Oh, that had to be terrible. I, I mean, it was literally up a hill and then around, I think it was like a quarter of a mile. And I think, I think they said we did about 75 to 80 trips. And I mean, it That's was, insane. it was towards the end, it was put one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, I would just stop put my hands on my thighs and literally breathe for, you know, a good five, 10 minutes. And 
you know, I, I was in reasonable shape going out there and that just destroyed me. What um, you needed was a video of Survivor that you could watch while you were doing the cardio. Right. What you needed was like a picture exactly. of David Bloomberg. Yes. So you could yes. keep focusing on the master yeah. plan. <laughs> I, I will say the other thing is that, you know, there was a shot of Luvu doing that challenge and they had a tree branch that they were carrying, you know, mm -hmm. chew on Deshaun. We mm -hmm. were told we could not do that. Oh, so, mm. uh, yeah. A little discrepancy there. When, when we mm. saw that, me and Xander were like, what? <laughs> it's like, oh, my goodness. Mm, interesting. So, mm -hmm. yeah, when when you were talking to Xander and realized you had run, in each, run into each other like at the gym, yeah. was he like, oh, you're the crazy guy screaming at the survivor <laughs> screen while you're doing your treadmill? <laughs> no, luck, luckily he didn't have recollection of that. <laughs> that would have been even better. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, how, but... Yeah, how do they put two people who live that closely could could i mean did I'll, run into each other on i'll the tell same you how tribe. i'll tell you how because um when so when i was originally on 41 i was living in chicago and then when covid happened i got called back to nashville for my to, because they were short staffed and i mm. got pulled from research and so when 41 was recasting for you know the pandemic my address was nashville mm. and my university was vanderbilt and so then they cast him as university of chicago and then in the meantime um, I moved back to Chicago. And so we were, you know, living it, it, the, uh, the whole production is like, wait, where are you living now? I just bounce around. Um, and so, yeah, that's how that kind of, I think slipped through the cracks. Cause I, I don't think they would have put us on the same tribe or maybe even the same season. Yeah. For all close. this time, I have always complained. There's not enough people from Illinois, not enough yeah. people from Chicago. And then boom, there you guys are. Yeah, so. Well, in Liana, so I, Liana, I, I, I work, in. I, work yeah. a, I work at a hospital that's literally five minutes from our house. Yeah. So it's, that's uh, crazy. it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and we'll get to more about Chicago later, but that's, you know, <laughs> uh, um, so, um, the, uh, the, the water puzzle or the, not the water puzzle, the water challenge. Yeah. You obviously didn't want to do it. You mentioned that. Do you think that you could have gotten the right answer with the triangle puzzle? That doesn't matter. It does not matter. That's irrelevant to this. Okay. Doing it. It doesn't matter because we would have lost as a tribe. The whole premise for the triangle mm -hmm. was that, you know, the whole tribe stays together and then you try and win it. So I don't care. I don't care if we have stuff, right? That's survivor, you know, roughing out the situation, which is why that's what you choose is because like it, I don't care at all. What I care about is being separated from the tribe. Right. And you mm -hmm. don't want to be separated from the tribe at that moment. <clears throat> and that puzzle, you know, yeah, I, I, you know, I would say like, I'm good at spatial reasoning, but we would fail as a tribe, you know, and, and that's perfectly fine. Whereas this water challenge, like why on earth would you want to do that water challenge where it separates two of you for the vast part of the day yeah. before you can go back to the camp and do it? Mm -hmm. and you know, the, my problem was, was that Xander was this little puppy boy <laughs> that was just bouncing off like, I want to do the water challenge. I want to do the water challenge, you know? And, you know, to this day, he'll say he wanted to be kind of epic in the first episode with his shirt off so that he would have like the fans. And I'm like, this is a game for a million dollars. I don't care. I'm like, I like, want to be know. epic. That's great. Yeah, and he's like, even even to this day, he's like, oh man, but we had a great first episode carrying those water things. I'm like, no, this is about my thighs dollars. were bleeding. I know. And so it's like, so with him being so wanting to do the water, and you know, then it fell basically to me to be the one, you know, yeah. you, you kind of saw me saying that. It's like, I can't say, I don't want to be the one being right. absolutely not because that yeah. creates more division in saying like, oh, he wasn't the team player. Yeah, I um, believe you said you didn't want to be the little weenie saying no. Exactly. Yeah. Um, exactly. I tried. I yeah. tried. And you know, yeah, and, honestly, then, and then there's Abraham going, yeah, you guys should do it. You should do it. I'm sitting there watching going, don't see you volunteering. I know. Ex mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, yeah, I... Yeah, I've I've replayed that many times being like, mm -hmm. could I have? And I honestly don't think I could have because that would have um, that would have been a bad first move. Right. Um, no. Nah, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, and then, like you said, it ended up pairing you up with Xander and whether you wanted to align with him or yeah. not. We heard other people saying we have to assume those two are together yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. If you're stuck together for four hours yeah. on the first day, yeah. you are almost certainly going to align unless yes. you absolutely hate each other's guts. Yes. I will yeah. say I, I was very weary of aligning with him mm -hmm. because of, you know, we did talk some strategy and, you know, he said that he wanted to play a very intellectual game. He wanted to play like um, Spencer, but then he also like his favorite players were Spencer, Joe and Ozzy. And I was like, huh? Well, Joe, two out of three Ozzie? of those, you should never see anymore. I was, like, more of these I, guys, I, I was yeah. like, wait, what? At least two. And he was like, uh, yeah. And so I, I just, I was like, this does not make sense. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. why would you mm -hmm. want to play like Joe and Ozzy? Right. Um, right. You know, uh, that, yeah. So I, I had some worry there, but kind of going back to camp was lay low and just pray that it's not you. Um, yeah. You know, it, it was a kind of, survival mode at that point once that yeah. challenge was over yeah and then luckily um and I, i'm jumping a little ahead of where yeah. i wanted to go but luckily abraham just made himself such a big target after after being that way that yeah, yeah. it was it was kind yeah. of obvious but yeah. before we get to that i do want to go back before even the water challenge and that was in the getting off the boat challenge yeah now i rewatched it again yesterday oh my goodness tiffany Tiffany botched this. Oh my God. It was oh Tiffany's fault. No, no, no. She's like telling you, like, oh, we didn't clip in or we didn't unclip. Yeah. That, I that was off camera. So after after the challenge ended and everyone was boating out, like we were still there and we were supposed to paddle out, but we were clipped in. And production just let us go for a good like five minutes and before we realized. Tiffany well, was yeah, like, no, was... no, we were in the game. And I'm like, no, right. Tiffany. Yeah, this is I, Tiffany for you. Yeah, I I knew that that's what she meant because the challenge was over. You guys never got yeah. off. The I boat, know we were still on the boat. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. just in the uh, in the um, you know, the heat she of excited, retelling. Okay. Yes, but she was excited about what was happening. When it comes to the oars, so I was watching it again, probably my third or fourth time watching that. I did not see any other oars hidden under colors similar yeah. to the color of the oars. Yeah. Yeah. Because that was a yellow net on a yellow oar. You think? I did not <laughs> see anything else. Do yeah. you, was there no. anything else there? No. Okay. No. Yeah. That's, that's a little sore subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. And I mean, Sounds it like was, it. I mean, the thing is, is that it's all chaos and you're trying to, you know, make sure that there's not a legacy advantage like Jessica found, mm. you know, on the boat. And so you're kind of distracted. You don't know anyone's names. Um, and so, yeah, Brad, I think was the one that grabbed that for the Ua, you know, the one that we missed mm -hmm. up there, you know, um, but yeah, every, I mean, everything was yellow and it was, mm -hmm. I mean, literally it finished and it was like five minutes before Liana actually found the, the missing path. Yeah. So crazy. it was just, it was, it was, it was bad. And, you know, talk about momentum. I mean, it, that just started loss after loss after loss. Yeah. So. It is unfortunate when there are certain components that Survivor creates and then yeah. it negatively affects the tribes in the way that it does. I mean, it's yeah. a color and they should I, have you, been like, hey, wait a second. Maybe, maybe you know, the color of the ore shouldn't be the same color of the net. You know, I'm know. actually I'm actually very surprised at that because everything when you're out there, they have a fairness judge on everything. Yeah. Oh, you know, oh, they a, do. Fairness yes, they police. do. It's like, I remember for the first challenge, I was like, I need sunscreen. And they came out and they're like, nope, we have to have sunscreen for everyone who needs sunscreen because we can't give sunscreen to one person. And it's like, that's if you're, if you're waiting in the sun, the other tribes have to wait in the sun because yeah. the tribe can't wait in the shade. So, you know, it, it is mind blowing to me. See, that that's paddle... interesting because when I was out there, they only, I, I mean, we didn't have that happening it, i think it was after a challenge when somebody yeah. complained about something they were like no 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 we checked everything out everything was was equal across the yeah. board but i will say before one of our challenges we weren't able to fill up our water bottles because there was yeah. a dead gecko in our water so we couldn't drink the water and yeah. i like i took the gecko out and i'm like someone needs to get us some new water and they're like, yeah, don't drink it. I'm like, wasn't going to. Yeah. So we went to the challenge yeah. and none of us had water. We, and yeah. Our tribe had no water and we kept saying to them, hey, can we have some water before the challenge? And yeah. they didn't give us any water. Did the other tribe have water? Yes. Because so for us, that maybe that changed because for us, it was like, 
if one tribe goes to get their waters, everyone has to be above water. See, that's so, fascinating because yeah. yeah, we yeah. definitely did not. It was literally because I um I decided to take off my shirt for the first challenge. And so wanted... everybody had to take off their shirt. <laughs> no, so I asked for sunscreen, <laughs> and they're like, no, because we have to have everyone have sunscreen. And so that's then they brought out literally a vat of sunscreen so that everyone could sunscreen up again. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was blown mean, away. It was kind of impressive. Yeah. I mean, in all the times, in, in all the years that I've been covering Survivor and all the people that I've talked, I've never heard of the Fairness Judge. So yeah. maybe maybe it is one they of said, the changes they for said 41. It's actually, they said it's required, I think, for any game show that's over $500,000 or something. That well, the they US were absent government. that day that we had a gecko in our water. <laughs> let me tell you. There was no Fairness Judge there. Hmm. Damn it. Yeah, I mean, I know that they've always talked about you know, it's, uh, you know, under game show laws and everything else. Every yeah. time someone points to something, it says, oh, production did this or some yeah. some player who has lost their mind and is now spouting stuff on social media will say, yeah. oh, they they decide, you know, production decided to do it this way. And it's like, no, they didn't yeah. stop saying that. We're sorry mm. you misunderstood the questions that the producers were asking you. Yeah. But that, you know. And this just, you know, kind of goes to, con you know, contribute to show that. Yeah. So, Interesting. yeah. Hmm. All right. Now, my next question goes to the uh, uh, the intellectual uh, aspect of things that you were talking about. So um, uh, when Jeff... I know. can you see where he's going? <laughs> no, no, David, you you're right. See, all I right, can... all right. Jessica, yeah. I can just say it. I don't no. know why it's so hard for you. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just lead with no, it. No, no, no. Yeah. This is just not going to happen. Just lead with it. You can't just drop it willy nilly yes, you when can. you don't even know what's happening. Yes, you can. Mm, I disagree with this. No. Voce, you're wrong. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, the two of you, I'm going to get you matching t shirts. <laughs> we'll wear them with pride together. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You could have an arrow pointing at each one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm with so, David, and David, yes. you're right. Yes. <laughs> she actually is the only one here who has a shirt that says, David, you're right. That's where the sign came from. I considered wearing it today, too. I really did, but I had to rock this one. So. Yes. It's true. I, I, I like your choice. Yes. Thanks. Um, so when Jeff introduced the shot in the dark, yep. he appeared to be saying it was about a 17% chance when he introduced it on the boat. OK, later at tribal council, he also appeared to say that now in the first case on the boat, we did not see his mouth at that point when he was right. saying. It. But I just rewatched and at tribal council, we did say his mouth or yeah. we did see his mouth saying it. And now I had heard and you may have heard us on the podcast mention I had heard during the season that he actually said something else. And that was why you corrected him. But I'm trying to figure out how they managed to work enough magic to make that happen. So what you you tell us, you so, know, like, what so the interesting thing is that I'm pr I'm pretty numbers oriented and he the, he never said a percentage when he described it at the first challenge. That's when okay. we first got to. It. He never said a percentage when we were at that first tribal council. He said, I'm pretty sure it was like, he said it's 18%. I'm, don't, that's something that I would say is not quoted, but it was wrong. Whatever he said was wrong. And that's when I said 16.7%. And that's when he was, in, the, the immediate, the way they've, they've edited that was pretty good because the immediate reaction was, no, it's this. And I, the reason why is because I was like, holy shit. I just, <laughs> Fucked up math on national television, and I'm gonna be known as the stupid surgeon that can't even do fractions. I was like, how embarrassing! And I literally like people, like a couple of my tribe said, you shrank in your seat mm. because I was so devastated. Mm -hmm. And then literally, I'm just like trying to do the math, like actually instead of having to memorize, just do it in my in, like in the sand or or mm -hmm. I guess with, just doing. I'm like. No, it's sixteen point six 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 seven. I was like, no, it is. Yeah. Then, like at that point, I was like, you need to focus. Abraham is going home. No, I like could not focus. We get back, and they're like, let it go. And I'm like, no, it's sixteen point six 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 seven. And then, so the following time when we met Jeff on the dock um, for the challenge, you know, 
he came over, he gives a little chat, and I was like, Jeff, it was 16.7%, 16.6%. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, you're right. So all the producers backstage had calculators out. Went, yes, exactly. <laughs> David, you're right. He was like, yeah, they all had calculators backstage, and you were right. I oh, that. my gosh. So it was, it was, it was a saga. Sleep. You worried about yeah. it? And you, and know, you were it's, right. It's, well, so the funny thing is also, like, when that actually happened, it was like, oh, shit. I was like, don't act like you're smart. Like, you don't want to like, mm. be like a smart out. I was like, David Bloomer is going to kill me for this one. <laughs> I was like, don't be that asshole that just says that. But honestly, it like came out okay from the tribe. The tribe just kind of laughed it off. So. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, How but- many times did you do something where you thought David Bloomberg and Jessica are going to kill me for this? Oh, all the time. All it's the time. not me. Don't well, drag me into this. <laughs> Well, no, I was like, if I don't vote Tiffany out, they are going to kill me for this. <laughs> vote out the weak. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Weak in this wrong. And don't be emotional. Yeah. Like, like, I love Tiffany, but don't be emotional. Yes. <laughs> vote out we the weak. We pooped together, but that's okay. Don't be emotional. Unfortunately, she was doing the same thing. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll get to that. I know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, actually, <laughs> that first is- before the vote. We'll be talking about the balance beam again. But go oh, on, okay. David. Sorry. She loves that. Oh, yeah. Uh, she loved when I brought it up on the interview a couple of times. But <laughs> um, before we get to actually, no, actually before that, the the challenge that led to the first tribal council. Yeah. I was watching it and I still couldn't figure out exactly what happened. You were ahead for oh, a little while. My and goodness. then you got to the sled. And no, it no, seemed no. like you no, just no, no. couldn't get the sled up the so, ramp. So. <sighs> oh. Just taking a moment. Deep breath. Let me let me just prepare it. So, we hauled ass on those sandbags, and like we charged those sandbags. Abraham was a beast. I was a beast. Liana was a beast. Xander did did pretty well. We get there, <laughs> and we were going up this. And in the pre-strategizing, people were like, "You want your strongest guys pulling the rope that's at the top?" And I was like, "No, false." You want your strongest guys in the very back pushing it up. It's like, I don't know. I'm not an engineer like David Bloomberg is, who probably knows an equation. But I'm like very logical. And I'm like, a rope, you're not able, you're going to have the bend and everything. You're not going to be able to have as much strength as if you have two or three strong guys in the back just manhandling that thing up. Mm -hmm. You're like, no, 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 no. We want the strong guys on the rope. And I was like, false. They did that. So that cart going up was not going anywhere. So mm. we were screaming at them to readjust. And finally they realized, oh, they needed to come down mm-hmm. and readjust. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, but it got to the point where that thing was not moving. And uh, Abraham is strong, but he is strong in bursts. And then he just dies off. Yeah. And so Xander is a cross country guy. He's, you know, 110 pounds soaking wet. So there's no meat. So it was literally, there were a couple of times where I was like, one, two, three. And I was like, no one else is pushing. I was like, it's literally just me uh, pushing. So that's where we lost all the time. But we got up there and Evie and Liana love you guys to death, but holy shit. It was one of those things where I just said, shut up, stop yelling. We've lost this. It's gone. Like, don't yell advice because you're just going to get yourself like out. Mm-hmm. literally there were three pieces in our puzzle at the end of this thing like they didn't focus on how tragic that puzzle was mm-hmm. and it was like not we were not behind oh, we were we were neck and neck when we got up there but the oh, puzzle like literally like we, we were just like put pieces together like no <laughs> literally i'm like standing there like what are we doing like there was no pieces it was like, what is happening that's awful. Yeah. Now, did you purposely avoid doing the puzzle? Or... Um, so here's the thing. I think that I'm decent at puzzles and I practice puzzles. I'm by no means a puzzle wizard. Mm. Xander has also said that he's good at puzzles, but not a wizard. Um, and so it was one of those things where like, if we need it, we can. I think Evie felt pressured to do the puzzle because I think she wanted to prove some worth. And mm. I think Liana thought she could step up as well. Yeah. Um, and this was not one of those where you could switch in because I, yeah. I think Xander and I definitely would have switched in. Um, and so, 
you know, it was, um, yeah, it was just it, the, it, everything fell apart completely on the puzzle. And like I said, you were in my head being like, just shut up right now. Like don't yeah. yell <laughs> and make enemies right now. Like, and, and there was a point yeah. where Xander and me just kind of turned away because we had been like yelling advice and we're like, we have to stop. Yeah. Like we, 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 we need to self preserve here. Yeah. Those are moments that you, you find yourself in your own head. Just, you can't be the person you would be outside of the game when you're in the game in those moments. You're just like, yeah. well, I'm just going to let this happen. <laughs> let this ride yep. out because this is not going to exactly. bode well for me if I interject right now. So it's, it's yeah. a hard and thing ever, to and have to get through. And the thing is, everyone's like, oh, well, you know, there's always comebacks in Survivor. And I was like, even if these other tribes mess up and they need to take apart their whole puzzle, we literally are not putting any puzzle pieces together. Mm, like, mm -hmm. there's no way. Like, yeah. maybe if there was an hour or something to put this puzzle together. But I was like, there is no way this puzzle is going to form. Like, the middle of the puzzle was a 41. And they didn't have the 41 together. Oh we were like, goodness. start on the 41, put the number, right. but just right. put the number. We know what number it is. And right. like, it was looking like 42 ish, 43 ish. We're like, no, 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 no. 41. Please make a puzzle that looks like 41. Oh, my word. Yeah. So is that how you ended up doing the puzzle on the second challenge? Okay. So I know we're skipping ahead. A little are, bit. Do you just want to go there? Do you just want to go there? Well, I'm, just. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm locked and loaded on that. Oh, uh -oh. let him go. Okay, I like go. this. A locked and loaded vote check. Why? Okay. So we get there. And so we had had this, this discussion about the challenge, how bad the first challenge was, the puzzle. And Xander and I were like, okay, one of us should be on the puzzle, right? We get to the challenge and it's a swimming challenge. And I was a swimmer before. Xander had swam. And so we were both planning to swim. But... Tiffany and Evie were going to be on the puzzle until Tiffany goes, wait, I'm a great swimmer and I can do balance beam was literally what she said. I'm standing there in my underwear because I'm going to swim this. I'm going to swim and do the balance. Beam. Now I'm thinking to myself, I'm not a small guy. I'm not sure if I'm that great on the balance beam. I can man my way over it, you know, scooch, whatever. But Tiffany is like, I got this. I can swim and I can do the balance. She even said that on your podcast. Yes. She said, literally, I can picture her to my left, sun beating down, saying, I got this. I got this. I'm like, she got it. Great. I'm going to be on the puzzle with Evie. I'm now just a moron standing on this dock in my underwear. But she's got it. What in the world was that? I mean, she didn't, she didn't got it. She no, got it. no. And so here's the thing. I, I love Tiffany and like, it was, it was unfortunate. I thought the way they edited that, but one of so the did things, she, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there were several times that she rolled. So first of all, wait, 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 we need to back this up before the episode ever aired. She tells me and Xander, she's like, I fell off once. And I was like, no, 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 <laughs> Tiffany. You did not fall off once. She's like, no, I fell off one time. I was like, Tiffany, minimum two, probably three. And she was like, I swear it was one time. And I was like, we should bet money on this. And Tiffany's like, all right, we'll bet whatever you want. Then she watched the episode and then she texted me. She's like, oh, whoops. <laughs> did, did you guys bet? We didn't end up actually betting. No. I would have, I, I mean, I was... I was 1,000%. I was like, no, Tiffany, I, I replay that in my mind over and over again. Mm. You know, sometimes we block things out. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, we all have challenges that we sucked yeah. at. Yeah. No, and it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's like I said, it was, it, the, the, the kicker for me was, and people can say this and people, people can mess up, how confident she was that she could do the beam before. Who was, who was, who well, and, and listen, for anybody who wants to be on Survivor, that's another thing to be mindful of. Don't ever act yes. like super confident going into anything because that's what is going to get you in trouble. If you walk in and you're like, I got this. I can do it. No problem. Yep. No, just well, be like very even keel about it. Be like, okay. Or, that's what I, that's yeah. what I was thinking because I was like, I don't know if I'm that good at balance right. beam on the water. It's like, mm -hmm. I have no idea. I mean, Liana flew across that thing. I was yeah. like, that's impressive. But it's like, I have no idea how I would have actually done on it. Right. Think, yeah. And I think Tiffany said that in the interview was like, yeah. well, I've done a balance. I wasn't yeah. thinking of a balance beam 
in my bare feet on you water. Can, you, can, you can stop with that yeah. first part. Tiffany saying, I wasn't thinking, no. period. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, I'm so sorry. This is yeah. definitely, it's all coming back on you. Wait, yeah. wait, okay, wait, wait. The one thing that killed me on the balance beam, and it's like, I, and, and, here, 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 here was the kicker part. Was there were a, there were a couple times where she was like halfway over, and then she just rolled off, <laughs> and it was like, no, no, Tiffany, stay and just rest, whatever you need to do. But don't there was, roll off. Don't roll off. Maybe it was a wave. You no, know, maybe a wave she just like her. literally turned like over. And it was like no, no. Remember, yeah. we talked about sometimes people are not rational. Maybe yeah. that was one of those moments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was very much one of those. Balance beams are hard. I know, yes. you know, my my son ended up seeing a doctor when he was younger. He was on a balance beam. I don't know. He was real young. He fell off it, smacked him. And he, he you know, that little piece of tissue that holds your lip oh, to yeah. your gum. Yeah. He just sliced that right off. Yeah. So, oh, God. Um, Why? So. Oh, I didn't need that. Oh, sorry. No, I didn't need that either. Oh, well, you're a doctor. Uh, no, but the brain is clean. Yes. It's oh, like well. not, See? Apparently yeah. nobody needs that. That's what the ENT said. So, you know, um, but uh, but yeah, balance beams are hard. Mm -hmm. Apparently. So they send it to I, the ER. So. I wouldn't I wouldn't know since. They yeah, you just were it. standing there waiting to <laughs> partake. It's funny because the um, you know, sometimes we we, we know our uh, the dream team that replicates us, you mm -hmm. know, afterwards mm -hmm. when they play out the challenge. And the dream team that was filling in for me was like, I'm so confused. Why was I standing there in my underwear <laughs> to do a puzzle without any shoes? Like, why just show it off? <laughs> why did that happen? And I was like, let me tell you. So why didn't That's you grab your clothes and put them back on? Because you you said this is a whole behind the scenes thing. When you go out to play, they'll tell you this is a water challenge. You don't need shoes, and then you decide what you're going to wear. And they take a picture of you, and that ah. picture is like a Polaroid. So the dream team knows what to do. So then when you go out off of the you know wardrobe boat, you're standing on the dock, and you can't change anything because gotcha. what that Polaroid picture is is what the dream teamer is going to wear to replicate. That. And area. those moments, I will say, are terrible when you're trying to decide, do I wear sneakers mm -hmm. or do I go barefoot? Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Those are horrible because they don't give you any suggestions. Yep. They're just like, all right, let's do this. This is what yep. it consists of. That's a yep. rough, rough moment. Yep. Yeah. 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 All right. So let's rewind since, uh, you know. We're going uh, back again. Well, you know, we keep <laughs> jumping ahead going, you know. He, but... Listen, have you not learned, Bocha? He doesn't like it when you go ahead. He doesn't want to skip around. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know. I know. No, I don't mind. It's, it's, because, in an it's because he's so intellectual and linear. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an engineer. I will admit. He's a control yes, you know, freak. It's interesting because uh, I also listen to. Uh, some other podcasts, including a Star Trek podcast, a Star Trek rewatch podcast mm -hmm. called Mission Log. And they very much, they don't have rules, but they have sections. You know, mm. this is the section where we do the summary. And mm -hmm. this is the section where we review what happened. And this very is the section regimented. where we, yes. And th they Not will occasionally- flexible. Not they will, flexible. Right. They flexible. will occasionally have times where it's like, well, I want to talk about this, but I'll save it for that section nearer to the end. And I'm like, oh, they're just like us. See, they, they have to no, have No, they're just like section. you. I try to, you know, mix it up. And you're like, no, 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 we're not there yet. That's right. Mm -hmm. Very engineering. Mm. Box. Not flexible. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You need to start following your own rules. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I do pretend to be nice when you do it. <gasps> oh, <laughs> asshole! Oh my goodness! I'm just getting pummeled uh, that is today. Amazing. That is amazing. Pummeled, unbelievable. All right. So anyway. Um, anyway. <laughs> unbelievable. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, as they showed you and Xander listening to Abraham, um. I remember at the time kind of being able to tell. So when I say at the time, this was pre the first tribal council. Sorry, yeah. I should reset that. Uh, you know, he's going on about, oh, yeah, we're definitely voting off Tiffany. And you and Xander are like, oh, yeah, definitely. And I'm just watching this. I remember watching it even on the first watch. Yeah. Like they are so leading him on. They do yeah. not intend to listen to him at all. Um, and, and so is that correct? It was always going to be Abraham. 
Yeah, 100% from when, when I walked up from the beach from the water challenge on day one, they pulled us aside saying like he was barking orders. He was already throwing Tiffany under. He was doing all the things that you should never do on the first day. Um, he was not a, following the master plan. He was not following the master plan. And, you know, honestly, um, like Abraham is a very cut and dry person, black and white, in terms of, you know, you got to work. If you don't work, then you you, you got to go. And, you know, he was not playing a game that was um, very, you know, he, he would have been very probably good in season one of Survivor mm, in terms mm-hmm. of, you know, not not the backstabbing and all that was going on. And so he could have been with know, EB. Exactly. Yeah. But going going into after that water challenge, it was like I was grabbing on to anything. Like there's a conflict. Great. It's not me. Yeah. Great. Go with it. Right. And you know, people would say, like, you know, Abraham would have been maybe moldable and I would have been able, he was gonna be with the guys, you know, forever. But the problem was was that he was not strategizing. And he would not tell us, like he would not tell me who he was actually gonna vote for until right before the vote. He was like, no, let's worry about the vote. If we lose, we're not going to lose. Mm. And so in my mind, I was also thinking, this isn't someone that I can really strategize with because he won't strategize. And right. sometimes that can be a good thing because mm. if someone's not, you know, if someone's going to be like a Ken where, you know, they're just going to be very black and white, you know, mm-hmm. you can have that person in your pocket, you know what they're going to do. Right. But in that case, it was like, even if I got Xander on board, it would be three, three. And then it would be playing too hard up front to try and flip something. And it was like, absolutely not. This isn't easy. Just let the boat go. The other thing that happened was, was that he broke the, uh, the right. flint after we won it on day one. And the sun was setting. And he went, took the flint, acted like he knew how to do it, broke it. And then the sun set and we didn't have fire the first day. Mm. And after doing that challenge, that just kind of like sealed his deal. Where mm-hmm. it was yeah. just like, it was like one and done. And it made it easier because it was like there was no scrambling. We all would take shifts following him uh, to make sure he wasn't, you know, finding an idol, didn't have an advantage, anything. So it was very much, you know, you can, I remember sitting at the first tribal council being like, if it's me, I would have read the room completely wrong, but <laughs> I'm very sure that it's not. Right. Um, because it was, and I think everyone wants that easy first vote um, mm-hmm. where you're safe. And, um, and so, yeah, so it was, it was one and done. And honestly, he, I don't, I don't, I, that was the right move because I think if I had tried to stir something up, that's the wrong move because people would have seen me as scheming and yeah. plotting too much. Right. No, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. the first vote and everyone's kind of on the same page. Yeah. Just let it be. Yeah. There's yeah. no reason. There's no reason to switch things. Yeah. I mean, the, the funny thing is he was trying to do what you should do, which is find a reason to get rid of somebody. But so, so here's, here's the thing. But he, by was, that time. I, uh, he was a little bit delusional. <laughs> Tiffany, Tiffany was not, he was, he, he was in his own world. Right. You know, about the Tiffany, you know, being out there. Like Tiffany was smart in jumping out and getting, you know, and getting the oars. She did not go and get all the oars, but by that point we were already so far gone mm-hmm. that it didn't really matter. So, um, yeah, yeah. So that none of us were thinking, oh, Tiffany is the weak link. You know, yeah, she she yeah. had swam out to the boat by herself. She'd gotten the boat by herself. She'd gotten a couple oars. So we were all. It, it was kind of, um, like I get where you want. Like you said, you want to identify the weak link. You want mm-hmm. to identify something. But it was like that was his own version of events that no one right. else was buying. And so yeah. that's where he kind of I put himself on an island by himself. Yeah, yeah. That was the thing. Even as you know, I was watching, and uh, you know. He was like, oh, did you see she jumped off? Whereas we clearly heard someone say someone should jump off and get the right. orders, you know? And, right. and then he's like, well, she didn't even do this and she didn't even do that. And it's like, no, now you're just making stuff up. Well, you and, know. and the other thing that he was doing was he was doing that in a group setting. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I would be very hesitant to do that because you don't know who's aligned with who. Mm-hmm. And like, if you're having a one-on-one discussion, that's separate. But when you're talking to Liana and Evie, and at one point, I think Xander was there, it's like, don't, don't don't be so aggressive in terms yeah. of throwing someone out, um, you know, it, right off the bat like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's similar to what happened on love you, yeah. which was um, where Nasir went immediately and told everybody yeah. Yeah. something. And it's like, Oh, don't, don't tell the whole group like right. that. You know, yeah. yeah. Now, he recovered. <laughs> Cause they well, no, 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 no. I was going to say he did <laughs> yeah. not recover. They never went to tribal council. Yeah. 
I know. It's easy to recover when you don't have yeah. to actually vote. So, yeah. so, um, so okay. So then you vote off Abraham, and then you're into the next, you know, the next day. So actually, so so I'll I'll, I'll stop you right there and say okay, that 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 night it's a long night. They take you back, and then you have to do confessionals that night, and you're so tired. It's mm-hmm. like especially because it was a double you know, conf- right. uh, double night or whatever. It was like, if it had been past midnight and you just wanted to, but I remember having this confessional discussion where I was like, I'm panicked right now. And I said, I'm panicked because lines have not been drawn in the sand mm. because we had this unanimous vote. You know, it was very easy, but there are no lines. And I was like, I have a good rapport with Evie. I have a good rapport with Xander. I think I'm in an alliance with them, but we haven't like actually, you know, pinned to parchment, right. you know, tested it. And I was like, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm close to Tiffany personality wise, you know, Liana, I don't know where she stands. And so I was panicked. I was mm. panicked on night, night three, because I was like, no idea where it's going from here. Right. Um, and so that was really where it was like, where do I go from here? And the next morning on day four, I was like, okay, Liana is someone who I don't know. And I was like, that's dangerous. Like I need to know mm-hmm. where she stands. And because, you know, they had been so busy with um, Xander going to Advantage Island and everything that you just didn't didn't have time. So I pulled Liana aside and we started talking about our lives. You know, she worked at McKinsey, which was a consulting firm that I had actually uh, interned at and was going to switch from medicine. So we talked all, all about, you know, work and, and had this talk. And then I said, you know, I don't think people would think we would work together. We should try working together. And she goes, yeah, that would be good. And I was like, so would you want to, you know, try and think about it? She's like, yeah, that could be good. And I was like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. I was like, this is not going well. Mm. I was like, so who would you consider voting for? And she's like, "Uh, we'd have to see. I was like, "Uh Mm uh-oh. And so I was like, and so I went to Xander and Evie on that fourth day. And I was like, I don't, I'm, I'm like a little worried that I don't know where people stand. And a few hours later, Liana pulls me aside. She's like, let's go for a swim. And so we go for a swim and she's like, hey, I think it would be really good to work together. We should try and get Xander out. And I'm just like, okay, we can get Xander out trying to, you know, always Mm -hmm. say yes. But I'm like, what is happening? I was like, something is really weird. And then Evie comes up to me and tries to final two deal. And I say, yeah, 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 sure. Of course, we'll do a final two deal. But I was like, something is not right mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. And so that's when I was talking to Xander um, about this. And we, we remember this sitting on the boat together and Evie comes up and we were both like, something is not right. But Xander was like, I'm just going to try and not focus on this. Um, and I finally had a conversation with Evie being like, listen, I think that we're two, we have similar backgrounds and you know, the research and everything. Like, I think that we would be good together. And she, she even said like, uh, she's even said post after talking to her that that conversation really helped because she was getting a little panicked when I was starting to like, you know, panic, like something isn't going on right. Mm-hmm. right. Um, and so that whole day was a little bit of a cluster where I was like, something, something is up. But then what happened was Tiffany and Evie and Xander all come together and they say, Liana's being very weird. Let's vote out Liana. And so everyone goes, the plan is Liana. And at that point, I was like, okay, I'm going to lay low. The plan is Liana. This is not making sense to me. That's when Xander found his advantage. And we read the advantage. And, you know, Evie, you know, was there for the advantage. And so we were, so I was thinking, well, they could flip and be Xander. But at that point, everyone was just saying Liana. So it was like, okay, let it be Liana. And so that was pretty much day four which, you know, is completely not shown because of time reason. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But that's the whole, and that's when Evie, Tiffany, and Liana were really, you know, saying, okay, it will be Xander. Right. Yeah. Crazy. Right. And I think, I don't know if it was day four or day five before the immunity challenge, Xander brought up Tiffany as the target to you and Evie if things didn't go well. Yeah. And the two of you agreed. Now, we know Evie wasn't being sincere, but were you? Um, that would have, uh, that was, I I don't ever recall saying Tiffany before, uh, before the challenge. 
Okay. He did. Uh, it was, it was, he said, if things don't go well, should we do Tiffany? And you were like, yeah, you know, that makes okay. sense. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't actually don't remember that conversation. Okay. Yeah. But because going into the challenge, we all thought it was Liana. I mean, yeah. me and Xander thought it was Liana. That was the decoy. Yeah. The women's alliance said it's going to be Liana. Liana is going to be a scapegoat because the first one, the first uh, vote out was Tiffany being the scapegoat mm-hmm. for you know Abraham, and so they said, okay, Liana will take this one. She'll be the scapegoat, okay. and they'll get out Xander. Okay. So then, it seemed like you and Xander thought that Evie was with you. Did you? suspect evie was actually with the women the whole time i didn't trust evie because i knew she was making final choose with everyone but Mm -hmm. at that point i had a good relationship with tiffany and everyone at that point knew about xander's idol that was not activated and so i was saying if it is if if it if there is a blind side coming up it's gonna be xander because if there is a woman's alliance they have to get out the idol mm. because right. if they don't get a, if they, if they, if they go for me, then Xander's sitting there with an idol that can be activated next. This is the rational thinking. Well, no, yes. no part it's, of survival, it's not, right? So, okay. Yeah. The rational thinking. Mm-hmm. But so, the, so the thing is in post interviews. And so, so the, so I'm going to skip ahead if you don't mind. Oh, Sorry, don't babe. ask his permission. Just do it. Voce. <laughs> Doing it. Skipping ahead. Flexible. So of, Love it. So one of the things that kills me, is that after getting voted out, Tiffany could not remember how the vote flipped to me, right? Mm. And she, and it was literally, we've talked for hours on end about this. And like, she was like, oh, we'll have to watch the edit to see how it happens. I'm like, no, you can't the watch the edit. Tell you. The edit's not gonna tell you anything. Mm-mm. But the, 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 um, the, the key thing here is, is that what Tiffany keeps saying, and this is something that she did not say up front, is she says, we knew that Xander's idol wasn't gonna be activated. And it's like, no, you didn't. And she's like, well, it took so long to find the idol. We knew the other two idols weren't going to be found. And I was like, no, 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 no. You have no idea when those two idols are going to be found. Right. Like one idol was right. found the next day. And she was like, well, we, we just, we, we knew they weren't. And then even if it was found, we knew he wouldn't play it because he trusted us so much. And I was like, what? Talk about irrational. You have mm-hmm. no idea. Mm-hmm. Right. If you're an all girls alliance, you mm-hmm. can't have the one person on the outs having an idol. Mm-hmm. Right. So that that's that's the, the, the as you said, Jessica, the irrational part. The yeah. irrational part. Yeah. So then when you were talking to Xander later after the challenge yeah. about Tiffany, you seem to be upset at her for her challenge performance. Uh, and your confessional and voiceover plus further discussion sounded like you wanted her gone at that point. And then you talked about uh, earlier, you talked about, you know, vote out the week and, you know, don't be emotional and all that. So that was actually your plan at that point. Yeah. So sitting. So the the challenge changed everything because, again, people can do bad at challenges. But if you remember, we've lost every single challenge Mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. We've never won a challenge. And Tiffany and she'll even say this, you know, in the middle when she like rolled off, there was almost like a giving up part in that challenge. And Liana flew through the challenge, Mm -hmm. right? And so for me and Xander, we were saying, why are we voting out Liana, right? That makes no sense to vote out Liana, right? She did so well, and we're we're essentially losing everything. And so the unfortunate part is that Tiffany got pulled for a confessional first. And so it was me, Liana, and Xander sitting. And it's like, who are we going to say? Our options at that point are to say Evie, who's off on Advantage Island, or Tiffany. And so we all three said Tiffany because of her performance. And, and Liana said that too, because she's like, yeah, you know, right. we, we need to do that. Because obviously Liana has to say that. And so very much it was like, okay, this makes sense to flip to Tiffany. The, um, I think the, the uh, moving forward on that, the reason why it was still at that point going to be um, Xander being voted off. But when Tiffany came back from her confessional, she's talking to Liana and Liana says, it's flipped to you. Tiffany says, and she'll say this to the day, she wasn't having that because she'd already been the decoy vote. So mm-hmm. she wanted to change right. it. So she wasn't a decoy vote. The problem is, is changing it to me doesn't change her from being the decoy vote. Right. She still gets a vote. 
And yeah. she still doesn't acknowledge this to the day, which is, you know, love you, Tiffany. But <laughs> you didn't change the decoy boat. I still put your name down. Because she didn't want her name being down because she's like, what if an advantage was being played? And I was like, if an advantage was played, it would have saved me and you would have still gone home. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had a good relationship. And so, and the thing, the key here, I think is, is that Tiffany says, why didn't you come to me and try to strategize with me about something? And the reason is, is Tiffany all along was saying, let's get out Liana. And I was reading bullshit. Mm. Something isn't right. Tiffany and Evie and it was, were feeding us bullshit. And mm -hmm. you could tell that. So why right. am I going to go to someone that's feeding me bullshit that hasn't given me anything and say, let's vote out, you know, mm -hmm. Xander. Right. So, and, and so here, and the other thing that I was weighing in my mind was people, they, at that point, I thought they probably know that I may be, have some loyalty to Xander. I'm not going to be the paranoid one that throws Xander under the bus and shows extreme disloyalty. I was mm -hmm. like, if that happens, that's fine with me because it's not me. But I'm not going to be the one that tries to go be sneaky and get out this guy. There are, yeah. if, they're, if they do that, they right. do that. Right, yeah. right, right. Um, so then were you surprised when you saw on TV how much Tiffany pushed to get rid of you and then also how upset Liana was about it? Um, I'm not surprised after knowing Tiffany for so long because she becomes so emotional. Like she's like, she, you can't, you can't reason with her when she goes berserk and she goes berserk a lot. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to, my phone is going to blow up when she yeah. listens to this. But mm -hmm. that's fine. Um, I'll, I'll forewarn her. I'm, I'm just going to block her. It'll be, it'll be better that way. Um, it's it's so funny because the little side tangent. Her I'll just husband, text her now. I'll just text her now. Don't listen to the interview when it comes out. Her husband, bless his heart. I don't know how he does it. He's like one of the most straight shooters ever. It's like the yin and the yang together. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, it really is. But no, I mean, she basically got uh, she in she couldn't put herself in my shoes to see what we were doing. Right. You know what I mean. And that's, 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 that's at the end, um, kind of what it came down to. Um, mm -hmm. and like you said, it's not rational, but survivor doesn't have to be rational. Right. People don't have to, you know, people are emotional and people can work on emotions and that's right. what yeah. happened. Um, I still, I, I still think it was not the best move for her, um, mm -hmm. because she had a connection with me that she did not have with Xander that right. could, that she could have played with later in the game. Yeah. And like yeah. even, it, yeah. 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 I was going to say, I, you know, it, you now know that because they decided to vote you out instead of Xander, it changed literally the course of the whole season mm -hmm. because it made Liana so upset yeah. that she eventually turned on everyone else from Yase, yeah. blew up the plan. All of them imploded. Yeah. It blew yeah. up Shan, you know, also was part of that plan and it blew yeah. that up. And so it just, it, you know, all because they decided to vote you out. Yes. You took them all down. I did. I did. I did. <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me tell you. No, nope, the uh, yeah, uh, yeah. That's take credit for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like they, yeah. It was the domino effect. Yeah. The, the, the other thing. The other thing. I think the key thing that I've. I think I said this in some of my post interviews to that day was, and Jessica, you know this. The confessionals are so crazy in the sense mm -hmm. that. You know, we're on a tribe of five people. Evie's at Advantage Island, and they were doing two confessionals at a time. So they were a little bit staggered, but really, you were not able to talk to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing is that Evie was at her Advantage Island, and Evie was kind of the voice of reason for Tiffany. They could mm -hmm. take through things. Yeah. Um, and so she was out there until sunset. Something happened with her boat where she was out on the water waiting to dock in for like an hour and a half. And she actually oh, got gosh. really, really seasick from it. But so she was not part of any of these conversations. Yeah. She came back. They literally had, we had maybe five to 10 minutes that I did not have a one-on-one -on -one with her. Not because I didn't try, but because there just wasn't, you know, time. Yeah. And then they put us into lockdown while Evie did her final confession. Yeah. And so that's like, you know, again, survivor's not fair. That's, that's, you know, the reality. No, they have a fairness judge. Not yeah. when you're doing the confessionals. Yeah. Yeah. No, I the mean, confessionals really are. I mean, I do think that, 
as much as I love Survivor and, yeah. and obviously I love the structure of it and I and I just love the idea of it. It is frustrating when the confessionals can have such a negative yeah. impact on the game that you want to play because someone is not there because yeah. they're on a walk and then the next person's not there because they're on a walk. And then all of a right. sudden, when you want to talk to the person, now you're in lockdown. Yeah. So it is unfortunate to see the negative impact that that can have. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. You know, it's and like the, it, thinking of like Boston Robin season 40 doing the, uh, you know, the buddy system where he wasn't going to let anyone talk. It's like, wait, Boston Rob had to go and do a confessional at some point. Yeah. And so it's right. like, and that's when that's you talk, when, you know, you would. Yeah. 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 And that's the other thing uh, that, that actually leads into it. I've seen, you know, there have been times where it's like, I am going to babysit this person and make sure yeah. they do not get out of my sight. But you can't because right. at some yeah. point you are going to get pulled aside. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So so you think that things might have been different if Evie had gotten back sooner or there'd been more time? 100 percent. 100 percent. So and, and Evie will say this like so we we had a little bit on day four when I was a little bit, you know, like what is happening. Evie wasn't too comfortable with me at that point. Um, mm. But then I was able to restore some some faith with her. And so that's why, you know, she told Deshaun, Xander, you know, has the idol, but he's going home. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that, that was, that's you true. know, yeah. that was, that was Rich. why it was because that was the plan. Right. Um, and so, you know, Evie, Evie had a very much more logical, you know, take on it. Um, and, you know, I think it was the fact that uh, basically the, the shit hit the fan when, um, when Tiffany's, you know, and I think probably Tiffany was, so embarrassed by the balance beam at that point mm -hmm. that, you know, it was kind of a, uh, yeah, a, a visceral emotional reaction to it. But, you know, there was a point where Liana and Xander, I think were in confessional and <laughs> Tiffany is sitting in her macheting, macheting the coconuts. Machete. And, she's, and she goes, <laughs> machetting. So this is like a, this is like a, a verb now. Machetting. Yeah. You can verbalize anything. Um, but, uh, <laughs> But uh, she's going chopping angrily. And she's like, you're not voting me out, are you? And I was like, no. And I was like, why is she asking me this? That This is like mm. the flashbacks that you have um, when it's like, wait, that conversation was probably some, something that I could have done to salvage myself. But that was, again, right before we went. So, And that, that was, was she, was she asking that because she knew she was voting you out? Yeah. It was, so she says, she says that that was like my chance to like change, you know, uh, you know, to, to, to come clean and they could do something else. But again, the, 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 for, from my perspective, she's lied to me the whole time. And I get survivors about lying, right. but you know, she's lied about, you know, it being Leon. And at that point, she still thought, she still thought that, that we thought that we are voting Leona, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, a bunch of lies. And the <laughs> other thing, the other thing that I'll say is that, it can be fun to watch three tribes, but to play three tribes mm -hmm. when you've already yeah. lost someone to play at five people. I mean, five people is the that's finale. That's like nothing. That's the finale. And then you remove Evie and there's four people. I mean, that's especially when it was an accelerated season. I mean, you don't have time to do the relationships. And then when people don't understand the advantages, you just have so much circulating. Yeah. It's kind of like. Yeah, one person doesn't have a vote unless he says butterflies and someone yeah. else says goats and broccoli. And well, and, and yeah. did you all discuss all of these advantages? Because obviously you've already talked about how you watched so yeah. many seasons right before going out there. And clearly this is a whole different version yeah. of the game that you watched. So were you having discussions about those advantages and how you were going to utilize them in your game? Yeah, so at, at one point, we we asked about the shot in the dark to the producers mm -hmm. and the producers actually had to put a timeout on questions for the shot in the dark and they had the radio to to mana the sort of the survivor main island mm -hmm. to get clarification on the rules for the shot in the dark that's how much we were talking about it because really? part of it because part of it was in part of what we asked was we said if someone doesn't have their vote can they still play the shot in the dark Mm. And there was a lot of hesitation to answer those questions because they were like, well, you don't know who doesn't have their vote or who doesn't. And they didn't want to like acknowledge that. So there was a big like production several times did a timeout for all of us, put us into like pseudo lockdown 
and had us all gathered around and said, these are the rules that pertain to shot in the dark. Mm-hmm. And so, because everyone was like, what is this? Like, we do not understand what is yeah. going on. Um, so there was general confusion overall. And then yeah. when you throw in these idols, when you throw in these extra votes, and then the question in, was, you know, if you have an extra vote, but you don't have a vote, can you play your shot right. in the dark? Right. And we got a nebulous answer on that. Really? So well, they didn't actually, even really no, give you like no, a no, clarification. I, you know, at this point, I, I wouldn't want to say for sure, but it was, it was, it was cluster is what happened because mm. literally the, I forget what the final answer was, what they told us, but they literally were radioing back and forth between the main Island um, for production to get. God, that's terrible. Yeah. I do. I do really feel for, seasons that I've seen since I played because obviously there's a lot of things that you're learning while you're out there. Yeah. But to have to relearn how to play the game that you've watched for so many seasons and that you have some comprehension of and you understand yeah. the nuances of it and then to have things thrown at you yeah. that you don't even understand and then production doesn't even really understand. Yeah. That's really really frustrating. Yep. Yeah, and that's, I mean, on social media, we were debating that. Wait, they have, he has the extra vote, but he can't Mm -hmm. vote, but he has this and that. And then I I know that there were some producers on Twitter like, no, this is the way it works. You know, and it's like, if you, excuse me, if you have to explain it that much, you've done something wrong. Most games are play tested. Mm -hmm. I understand you don't have the opportunity necessarily to play test survivor, but think it through. I mean, we've had situations like, I mean, Jessica and I predicted the outcome of the, the season that shall not be named, um, you know, ahead of time. We, in our pre, in our preview show, we were like, someone could get voted out super early and come all the way back Mm -hmm. And win at the end after having played for almost no days. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but the thing that I'll I'll say is a little bit more fair about this is that's a relatively black and white. Someone's going to come back on this day. Someone's going to come back on this day and enter the game. Mm -hmm. And it's like not hard to follow. Right, right, right. You know, and so, I mean, if anything, I would blame, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. That's a horrible premise, but I would blame the players for not, Voting Underwood right out, right. you know, when oh, he yeah. got back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so do I. Do and right. Yes, the, but they there, they, there they, are under, players they understood. Who said, yeah, there are certain players who were like yeah. the the premise is not on trial. Yes, it was. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah. So now, one topic that we have hit on a couple of times uh, is um, that. Okay, well, actually, I had two questions in a row, and I, I just confused them. So let me ask you the first one first. Uh, Tiffany said that she knew you wouldn't be loyal to her and the oh, tribe. Oh, I heard that. <laughs> Trust me, I wrote that down. Oh, okay. one of his notes. So, oh. so I mean, knowing... This is aggressive. That, yeah, knowing your plans, like scheming and plotting and being flexible, would you have been loyal or would you have flipped? Wait, so let me... So here's the thing. The reason why, sorry, my dog's walking by. Oh, he's so cute. We love it. The reason why I was not going to put out Xander's name right up front is because I w- you have to be loyal to some people. You mm-hmm. have to have mm-hmm. it. And so to me, the most important thing is finding people. I even said this in the preseason interview. I want to find someone like Ken to play that mm-hmm. I can be loyal with. Mm-hmm. And so someone like Tiffany if we, if, if she hadn't lied through her teeth to me or like, you know, it presented some sort of common ground. No, I definitely wanted loyalty. Now, am I going to be loyal at final five, final four? Questionable, right. but you've yeah. got to get there. You've got, you, you've got to get there. You can't, you can't just start, you know, throwing hail to the wind, you know, up front and, and right. be known as someone that's just going to, you know, wig and wag at anything. Okay. I think now, that, that's like, yeah. now, someone has come on to this stream, and I don't know how they got this link. I swear to you, I don't know. Oh, no. You lied. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. No. No. Bloomberg, this is not appropriate. Bloomberg. Blame I did not, not sign up for that. I did not no. the link. No, 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 Wait no, no. No. All of a sudden, it popped up there, and I no. almost didn't see it. No, of her. now I, what I did not come onto hers and call her out for all of her lies. Now, listen, <laughs> you guys were coming at me, so I'm like, I need some backup. No, 
no, no, no. I, 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 I did not agree you. to this. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is unacceptable. Listen, if you are just loyal to me, Poche, if you're just <laughs> you, Jess is like, she's going to be loyal to me and she's going to jump on this podcast if I oh just call her goodness. last second. Oh I was wondering goodness. who you were texting there, Jessica. I, I was, I was I like, was, I need help. <laughs> so, so in all fairness, in all fairness, I will give this to Poche. Do I think I would have had a better game if he would have been with me? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yep. yes. Because you got voted out the very next time you could have gotten voted out. Listen, you see, you see what he's saying? But here's the thing. You heard him. You heard him say, would I have been loyal? Of course he's going to say that now. But here's the thing. <laughs> if I got no, to the final no, no, five, no, 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 then... no, no, no. Did I no. say I would be loyal through and through? I did not say I would be loyal through and through. I said <laughs> you did, final you five, final around, four. Okay. Listen up. You walked me around the island, the idol, the uh, like the island for like an hour looking for the idol you already knew Xander had. <laughs> I'm not gonna just. There's other advantages out there. Go oh, look for shit. shit. You told me. You told me we were voting Liana. You said the plan is I to would, vote Liana, which is completely was was bullshit. <laughs> I feel like we're on Mari Povich. I, I don't know what's going on. What oh, do you need to take a test or something? Right, wait, this wait, should be a DNA test wait, wait, wait. be taken. This is, this is how crazy Tiffany is. <laughs> Tiffany, for, for three months, we would talk literally two hours a day. Somehow I found a way in the hospital to talk two to three hours a day about how I was voted off. And she's like, well, I think Liana said this. You know, I was saying this. We'll have to wait. Every day, it would change. I'd be like, Tiffany, why would you do this? She's like, oh, well, maybe all this. And then it turns out want? it's all Tiffany. It's all Tiffany just freaking out, <laughs> letting her emotions rule her. She He's couldn't think such logically. a liar right now. I Bloomberg. am not a liar. Bloomberg, Bloomberg, <laughs> you have to understand something about Voce. Here is the, the, the truest form of Voce. Voce has a hard time seeing through somebody else's eyes. Bullshit. So the point was, <laughs> Bullshit. The point was Voce love. So here, I can see through Tiffany's eyes. Beam, fall off. 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 Listen, for two seconds. Listen, here's what happened. Okay. Voce. <laughs> to be fair, Voce, my love. We would go to the bathroom and make poo poo together, and you did not talk strategy with me. Why? You kept telling me it was Liana, and I kept being like, "Is this bullshit? I think this is bullshit." You should you have said, "Is this bullshit?" I would have said, "Yeah, I'm lying to you." Through You're my lying right to me. Okay, that's not true. We were gonna. It was we put Liana's name I up in Xander. Lying. So there was no reason to say anything to you because it was Liana, as far as you were concerned, because it was going to be Xander. So wait, it, but then, but then, wait, 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 listen to this. So then. Me, Liana, and Xander are talking while you're on your confessional. Who are we supposed to say we're going to vote out? The crabs. <laughs> Evie. Do you see what I'm working with? Why couldn't you say Evie? We could have. But instead you picked me and I was already on the block. Liana and Xander both said you also because of your balance beam performance. <laughs> Oh, oh, my balance beam four men. Okay. Free we, Willie was an easy target. I was an easy target because of the balance beam. You wanted to cut the goddamn artery. And once we cut your artery, we won everything. You, oh my goodness. She acts like, wait, 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 wait. This is my best art. This is the wait best Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 Shh. Hold Tiffany, on. can you mute Tiffany, please? So you don't hear the noise in the background. Hold on, hold on. Here, wait. I'm just checking myself in the fire before I get voted out. <laughs> So Tiffany, our, <laughs> Tiffany's argument is we knew the idol would not be activated and we knew that we were going to start winning. Two no, things that's not that my can, argument. My two argument. Two things that you can say retrospectively yes. after having played the game. You had zero clue when Xander's idol would be activated and you had zero clue. You guys were talking about Matt zinging each other. But, that, but here's what I did have. But here's what I did know. What I did know was that it was girl strong no matter what. We already got one guy out, and it was going to be a matter of whether it was her, him or you. And because Liana, her name was first, we went with that plan. Somehow that got flipped to my name. I wanted to test the loyalty with Evie, too. So, and then when the, Liana said, it's going to be you, I said, well, if it's going to be me, then why doesn't it just be Voce? How do I know that you're going to be loyal to me? And that was with me and Evie. That was me and Evie separately. And so 
to show my, to make sure I was in the, in the good side, on the good side, Evie was like, well, it doesn't matter to me. And I was thinking, well, if we keep losing, what's the difference? Who goes first? It doesn't matter. Because Xander has an idol. 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 Because Xander has an idol, but he was good. It wasn't activated. There's no way that would have been activated. <laughs> there you go. There it is. She said it, ladies and gentlemen. You don't know. She said it wasn't going to be activated, which she does not know. Wait, wait, wait. wait Tiffany, just be quiet. Bloomberg this is and how Jessica. Shush, shush. No, no, Tiffany, this is not your time to talk. This is my podcast, not yours. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Bloomberg, 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 yes. and yes. Jessica. You yes. just heard her said. We knew the idol would not be activated. We did. She did right. say that. Now, as two reasonable, you know, individuals, David the intellectual Just and Jessica the me. one that's played, her saying we knew it wasn't going to be activated. Do you see a problem with that statement? Yes. <gasps> David, I saw, you know it, I saw it. No, I saw it at the time. I'm sorry, Tiffany. Okay. But wait, 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 Tiffany, 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 don't talk I Jessica. saw it at the time. Jessica. It was like, I know okay. you're, I know you're aligned it was like, with, with because Tiffany. Because that was the argument. I think we've already discussed the fact that these rules were a little confusing for the people that were playing, right? Yes, but. You, you've acknowledged just, that. Yes, but the thing is that we, we said at the time that, or at least I, I, I know I said at the time, I don't remember what you said, Jessica, but at the time, you know, the. I think Evie and Liana were making the argument, especially uh, Liana was, that get him now while he has no vote. Don't mm -hmm. let it be activated. Yes, correct. And that made sense. It, it did make sense. Me. But it did. It did. But what, what's missing here is there's part of the edit that didn't show the whole thing that went down, which is no. a whole big thing. And it came down to Evie and me, deci Evie deciding essentially, you know what? It doesn't matter. She didn't trust Voce that much. That much. I wasn't talking strategy to Voce, and so it really became like a coin toss, which was a, a coin toss, which was really how it actually went. It was kind of a last thing, and the reason I flipped no, to Voce, no, 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 Evie reason came I back. To Evie Voce, came back. Evie came back, and you guys said it's Voce, and she said, "Okay, I'm fine with that." Correct. And the reason that we went to Voce was because Liana became cuckoo crazy with some stuff. She came to me. She said it was me now. And I said, well, if it's me now, what happened to the whole plan? And Evie's not here for this plan. And I got a little annoyed. And then fast forward, Voce was paranoid, Voce. I was paranoid before because you were lying to me. You, well, were, you were lying, lying to, me. to me. You were walking me around the aisle. I never lied to you. Never oh lied to you. This, this never boy, lied they, to you. They need like couples counseling. See, this wait, is what this is. Wait, we well, brought you together. Yeah, I, yeah this is, yeah. Bloomberg. This is couples counseling. Bloomberg. Okay, Voce listen. Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to jump in here since I since I let Tiffany come in and join us. Not forgiving <laughs> you for this, Justin. Yeah, you. Listen, yeah. I'm just going to say you guys started it at the beginning. Okay, you were ganging up on me. I had to bring in some backup, but I will say this: I don't think that either of you will ever agree <laughs> as no, to what actually transpired or did or did not happen. Because of what we've already discussed, right? People come in with their own mindset and their own thoughts and what they think is going to be best for their game. And you're paranoid and she's paranoid and everybody is walking around thinking that they're going to be next and their, their names are being dropped. And when your name gets dropped, boy, that has a really, really big impact on everything that you do because it's swirling around your brain. So do I think that some shit went down that probably shouldn't have gone down? Absolutely. I think you're both right because... I don't think Voce should have gone home, but I understand where the paranoia oh, comes from. But here's the whoa, thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She just said, I don't think Voce should have gone I don't home think he should have gone home, but I understand how the mind can get to that point. You understand how Tiffany went batshit crazy. I just want I know to see she how went batshit crazy. She was what? reacting to Tiffany what was transpired. Why is it only her? Tiffany? Why Tiffany is it not Evie and Liana? Evie and Liana aren't Voce on this wrote call. my name down. He did write your name now. I'm not forgiving him for doing whoa, that. Whoa, whoa, Thank wait, wait, you. Wait, wait, wait. But you didn't. So the, and the you wrote is, my name down. Why not yeah. Evie's? Because if you told me to write Evie's, sure, I would have written Evie's. Well, wh what? What? <laughs> what? Why not Liana's? Sure, tell me to write Liana. It was supposed to be Liana. So why'd you put my name down? Because you were yeah, shady. Exactly. Uh, Jessica. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you know what? There, there you have Actually, it. Actually, no. 
No, it's not because of your you were shady. It was because of the balance beam. <laughs> Listen, that's bullshit. Because then I could have voted you up because you had a little boo boo on your toe and you were wearing maxi pants between your legs. <laughs> Yeah, and who got the flint for us? And who actually hauled shit up that mountain? And who and, actually and who made your fire and gave you light? <laughs> we we let you do the fire to make you feel good, and we've heard about it so much that it's not such a liar. It's you see like, how mean he is. That's we what could we're all doing. make fire, but it's like we don't want to be the show stealer like <laughs> Tiffany was. I mean, like, here, let me make fire. And so <laughs> Tiffany was like, here, let me have my glory days. <laughs> It's, it's like I it's, will it's, say that having Tiffany on here does shorten the time frame because otherwise, what was going to happen is we were going to have this podcast and then Tiffany was going to be like, "Now I need to tell more of my side." And then mm-hmm. Voce was going to say, "Now I need." It would have been never. a grueling Instagram live. It's never going to stop. Um, These it, two will yeah. forever so, be butting heads. So but let here. me ask you this, and then Tiffany, we're going to give the podcast back to Voce. Of but, course, we are. But but uh, at, let me ask you this: back so anyone who has been listening or watching already knows this anyone who follows either of you on social media knows this despite what happened you guys appear to be great friends now how did that happen after tiffany ruthlessly destroyed your dreams <laughs> Boche? i have a social game wait she 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 told me he asked me not you yeah. tiffany. <laughs> i love you because i am Full of grace and forgiveness. Oh, good and, lord! And and recognize that people make mistakes, <laughs> and people are emotional, and and don't know that they're sabotaging their own game. And so I took Tiffany back. No, <laughs> no. So the the irony that we've talked about through this whole thing is that it and it's it's kind of like one of you one in one of your rules about like find a common thread and make an mm-hmm. alliance with them mm-hmm. is that Tiffany and I were like actually close on the island and like mm. we clicked um and you know it's like that was real and you know and so that superseded the game altogether you know it's Aww. it's oh god um, i love you Voce. oh <laughs> see this is this is happiness right. this is good feels no but love so it. and i will say so this is where one of your rules screwed me over bloomberg <gasps> is that Ooh. no i'm just joking i'm just joking but when I was, I was literally sitting on the boat, the blackout boat going back. And I was thinking, I was like, vote out the weak, then the strong, we're losing. And I was like, stay, you know, don't, don't play too hard. But then it was like, and I was like, but Tiffany, like, I love being with Tiffany and I love everything. But then I said, don't be emotional about this. Like Aww. Tiffany, Tiffany here is like, you know, at that point, like that challenge was a disaster. And then I was like, <laughs> she's so good with people that like she can instantly get in with people and mm-hmm. make relationships. And I was like, that's dangerous. So I was like, don't be emotional in this decision in saying that, you know, going along with Tiffany, because I thought that she like in this instance, like that would make the most logical sense. See, which we've discussed, but in, in all fairness, um, Voce, my love, mm-hmm. which you mm-hmm. need to explain to every uh, Jessica, let him know. I had no intention of being on this tonight. You just literally- <laughs> texted me five seconds ago i really I, did i was like what are you doing right now yeah <laughs> oh i was God. like that was a harsh hello <laughs> I, know, I didn't even like i was like i got i gotta go quick with this well i saw and you I just texting have to, but... i know i was like this is not like jessica listen <laughs> you know what i just I got over I that boring i got over not a two-day all. migraine this is fascinating i love it Listen, I got over a two-day migraine. I just wrote to, to Voce before he got on his podcast. Be nice. Love you. <laughs> and I said, you brelvi and three Advil for the win because my freaking headache just Aww. went away. But which, and, I've, and I've only said very nice things about you the yes. whole entire time. Absolutely. Voce. Yes. <laughs> You're so full of shit. <laughs> no. I'm trying to I'm trying to see here what other lies I have written down for you. <laughs> He's such a jerk. Um, <laughs> Well, listen, Voce, we can do this. Mm-hmm. We'll discuss it with you, and then Tiffany will have to listen later, and she'll have to respond on Twitter. Perfect. So we'll we'll let you have your He's moment. not on Twitter, so. You're not uh, on Twitter? She can. No. Don't worry. I'll, I got the, I got you, Voce. Uh-huh. I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure you got me. I'm sure you got me. But in all fairness, in all fairness, if I could do it again, if I could do it again, it's we we would love a we would love a redo, him and I. 
Oh, see, yes. he is he is my island husband forever. That now way, I forever. can just backstab her back, <laughs> make her be the third boot. See how you know how mean he is. By the way, you should know how mean this guy is. He mean. is so mean to me. This man, so Angel. mean. Angel. This is definitely a Maury Povich kind of moment. Yeah. Jessica, sure. he hung up on me today. He <gasps> called me at work. I'm mid work. He says something. Blah, 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 blah. Click. I said, Did you okay. Say Okay. She was very rude to me. Oh my god! I didn't even get two words in. He was yelling at me. Oh my goodness! It's because I, I was finishing the podcast that she did with you guys <laughs> last week, <laughs> and she made a comment, and I was like, "What in the world?" So I called this her, yelled amazing. at her, and hung up on her. I'm gonna get <laughs> off because I want Boche to have his time, but I don't know how to get off. Shut uh, up, Boche! I don't need. I'll pick you up. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we'll leave that one alone. All right. Bye. <laughs> have fun with my husband don't believe a word he says it's all lies we're okay. back to practicing the balance beam <laughs> tiffany yeah um you know what boche i'm gonna do that and when don't fall asleep tonight don't fall asleep tonight <laughs> all right Bye, Live in fear. love you tiffany Bye. love you guys have a good night oh my god jessica i'm gonna, you're, you're, I'm gonna get you for that one listen I had to i was oh like I really... the funny thing is that i had actually thought about Oh, wouldn't it be funny to start out the podcast with mm. Tiffany popping in, voting Voce, saying you're out, you know, and, and everything. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. Look it. And I you made know? it happen. <laughs> Unacceptable. But no, here's what I will say about this, Voce. This is what I love. I love that, like, really, like, genuine relationships can come out yeah. of Survivor. And that you can have this incredible thing that no one else truly understands that yeah. you've experienced together and that you can continue to fight about it, laugh about it, cry about it, like yeah. come together about it. And so I just think it's so adorable that you and she have this relationship. And I think it's I think it's lovely. So, yeah. And I think you're both great people. So the <laughs> fact that like we get to enjoy this with you makes it even better. Thanks. Yeah. You know, it's actually that. It was the surprise that I had going through casting. I was like, you know, this is who I'll be. This is what I'll do. And I was like, you know, I'm here to win the million dollars. And that's that still is why you go to play. Mm -hmm. It kills me. It was like the preseason thing when they're like million dollars or a title. I'm like, million dollars. Million dollars. Yeah. Yes, I mean, thank it you. It was only me and Sydney. We are the only two that said that. I'm like, what? are you are you people are you people just independently wealthy or like just crazy? Yeah. Like, no, I was all about the million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um uh, you know, I was, they were like, no, it's harder when you get out there with all the people. I wouldn't say J Jeff is very much in all of them are about, you know, the relationships. I, I still will say like, it's about playing the game, but I was surprised by the relationships mm -hmm. that you make with these people and the bond that actually does happen. Yeah. It still shouldn't affect your game, but it is kind of that military like experience yeah. that you get yeah. through trial by fire. And yeah, I think the sure. thing that's interesting with you is that you were pre-jury, she was post-jury. So yeah. it's not like you were on Ponderosa or a trip right. or something mm -hmm. together. It was that you two reconnected at yeah. some later point. And that leads into what did you guys do in the pre-jury beforehand? <laughs> I mean, normally they send you on a vacation in the middle of COVID. They're yeah. not sending right. you to Australia. I mean, like Australia had its doors closed also. So, yeah. um, so what did you do in the pre-jury? Yeah, so the pre so the pre jury was very painful. So yeah. a couple a couple a couple comments that I'll make is that you know part of the problem with the advantages is that you guys didn't get to see the pre jury and the pre jury and because you know so much time during the episodes was spent you know to the advantages and the pre jury the personalities in the pre jury are amazing. I mean, mm. really are. I mean, mm -hmm. the whole cast is a good cast, but. Um, you know, from Brad to Sarah to the whole Je Jeannie, who you really didn't get to know. Jeannie is one of my favorite people ever. You know? Like just really, really great individuals that that it's unfortunate that people didn't get to see. So being yeah. there with that group was awesome. But so we basically went to, you know, Ponderosa. Mm -hmm. um, and when I actually got voted out, I looked at one of the handlers who I had gotten close with before the game and the pregame and the quarantine. And I asked her and I was like, yeah, Darla, when are, when are we going home? And she goes, we can't talk about this tonight. Like literally I've w just walked off the, you know, taping your final, like goodbye. And I'm like, when are we going home? Like, Aww. I just want to get out of here. And mm -hmm. she's like, they weren't going to tell me, but then they're like, well, actually either tomorrow or the next day. 
So mm. this is like on day six, because basically COVID had erupted when we were actually starting to play the game. And so they were just trying to get us out whenever they could. But that flight got canceled. And so they said, no, you're actually here in Ponderosa. And what happened was, was after we had quarantined in Fiji, there were no cases. And so masks go off and there's no restrictions. But when we actually were there, they had an influx of COVID cases and everything went on to strict lockdown. So in Ponderosa, the staff couldn't leave and go be with their families. They were oh locked God. down into Ponderosa. <gasps> so the Ponderosa staff was there for three months without seeing their families, oh without my leaving. Gosh. Yeah. And so they shut down the resort and made survivor bubbles. So only between the islands that were survivor islands could you go to. And so we couldn't do any of the normal activities. Mm. And so literally it was Ponderosa where we could hike on our island. Um, or we could go out kayaking or watch TV. And that was pretty much it. Wow. I mean, it was, it was an, it was an awesome resort, but it was miserable because, mm. you know, there was nothing to do. And then what happened was they would, would tell us your flight's going to be in two days. It's going to be in three days, your flight. And then it got canceled and then it kept mm. getting canceled. More people would come out and then they started p- kind of panicking, figuring out, are we just going to se- separate Ponderosa into two halves? have the pre-jury on one half and do breakfast hour and then jury on the other hand and then do a second breakfast hour. And then finally they were like, grab your bags. Google just chartered a flight out. We're going to the mainland. We go to the mainland. Someone ends up bringing Sydney um, the next day. And then we're in this abandoned sofa towel for three days until Google has this jumbo jet with 10 people on it and we all fly home. So oh it, my gosh! It was, it was a crazy experience, um, but I will say so. Uh, bad experience in terms of everyone's just you know very bitter, and I shouldn't say mm. bitter. I think one of the things that I struggled with was that I had no idea why I was voted out. Yeah, like zero idea. And everyone else had you know people from UA or Sydney. Oh, that's knew, true. Knew Since why. you had no one, else. I had no one. Yeah. So when right. I get home, I still don't know. So when I get home, the game's still going on. And then we didn't have contact information of anyone. So I ended up finding Evie's information. And it wasn't for a couple months later until like everything. And then Tiffany is going on her rants about <laughs> not knowing why I was voted out when it was her all along. Ah, oh, damn um, Tiffany. So that was, you know, that was, I think it's why our, our pre-jury is so close. I mean, mm-hmm. literally, you know, uh, pe- people have all gone to Brad's ranch. You know, Brad came out with his girls to Chicago to visit. You know, Abraham's been in, I, I don't, I think it's unusual for a pre-jury to be this Yeah, close. that's um, incredible. Good yeah. for you. And I think the, um, w- one other thing that I'll say is that I think one of the reasons why Yasa sucked is because <laughs> we didn't have conflict. We didn't mm. have, you know, and conflict can be good because yeah. it can kind of, you know, create, you know, an easier way for kind of who, who to get it out. But mm-hmm. we yeah. honestly genuinely liked each other. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I think everyone on the tribe are really amazing people. Um, and I think that just goes to, you know, why I'm so close to Tiffany. I still talk to Evie, Liana, all of them. Um, and so I, I think that that's just kind of why that worked the way. I think the other interesting thing is that the pre-jury, we're all pretty close and we're all kind of neutral. The post, the, the jury uh, had some tension. And, you know, mm. I think you saw that in the Ponderosa videos. It's yeah. kind of nice that the pre-jury stayed out of that yeah. and that, you know, we're all kind of, um, I think, neutral parties. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And this is not the only podcast where, uh, you know, there are two people who are doing this, you know, right there next to each other, having differing opinions on what yeah. happened. I mean, I listened to two other yeah. podcasts where one person said, oh, when I did that, it was OK because of X. And then the next podcast yeah. was, no, he's totally wrong about mm-hmm. that. That's not the way it happened. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, it just, you know, I think even. um I think Tiffany mentioned that uh, um, on her podcast that um, she thought she won the blanket at, when she oh. went to the island too, you know, and someone had to tell her, no, you never got a blanket, you know. They so. told her, but that's <laughs> love you, Tiffany, but you don't remember in the game that you didn't win the game that you played <laughs> to get the tarp. I think the name of this podcast should be Love You, Love Tiffany, you Tiffany, but. but. <laughs> yes. 
Hold on, yes. let me let me write that down. That's a, love that's you, a Tiffany. Thing. But <laughs> love you, <ya>, Tiffany. But <laughs> dot dot dot. <laughs> Yes, very that, appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's actually that's just my tagline for Tiffany. Yeah, it's yeah. If I was end. still doing written interviews, well, first of all, my fingers would have fallen off by now. But, mm. um, yeah, that would be the the title for it. So it's perfect. Um, I love it. now you mentioned people going to various places, like people coming to Chicago, and this was something I had uh, mentioned earlier. I was going to get to. So Chicago seemed to become a place with a lot of contestant gatherings over the season, mm -hmm. um, it, it, all the way up to the finale viewing party. How did you end up doing so much hosting or co-hosting? Yeah, no, I think part of it again was the pre-jury is so close and Sarah who was living in Boston actually came and took a job in Chicago. Mm. And I, I oh, from the nice. pre from the pre jury, I'm the closest to Sarah. We just, you know, being there, we're, you know, similar. It was back. because we picked you as, as winner pick. <laughs> right. Exactly. Blame us. You didn't yes. commiserate. <laughs> yeah. Damn yeah. why blank loss made us lose course. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it, when we were out there, we would kayak every day together for a couple hours. And so we just got to know each other very, very well. Nice. Um, Br Brad, Brad, Brad thought she was, she moved here because we were dating. We we're like, no, Brad, <laughs> you're not dating. Um, but, um, but yeah, so she came to Chicago. Um, she's, she loves it here now. Um, and then Xander was living here and then Liana was here over the summer for, mm -hmm. you know, COVID reasons. And, and I think even, even into the, um, into the fall. So there was already a number of us here. And then I hadn't, like, I had never met Heather. Um, and so, but we had, you know, looked at each other for so long. And I mean, normal people have, you know, I think it's like a three or four day pregame. Our mm. pregame was nine days, which was I crazy. Know. And then quarantine was 15 days. So we had been, you know, I feel like I, I knew these people yeah. um, after that long. And, you know, yeah. si Sydney, oh my goodness. <laughs> Sydney, <laughs> you know, I got to know her for a day you know, when she was, when she joined the pre-jury before we went home. But I mean, she's just hilarious to see. I, so you guys have talked about pre, pre-game, like what not to do, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She did everything you should not do. Oh my God. Literally. So in quarantine from day like seven to 15, we were allowed to do our prison circle walk in the field. Mm. They would let us out for two hours a day, each one hour session. And you would walk in circles. You couldn't run because you couldn't show athletic ability. But Sydney would come out <laughs> in her thong, literally wearing a thong, and would just juggle coconuts while she was walking around. And Is that a would, metaphor or that's literally know, what she was doing? No, that's literally okay. what she was juggling. Okay. <laughs> juggling. And not juggling. Um, and literally, we would all talk to the, uh, to the handlers and be like, who is this girl? Like, is she actually with us? So much so that we all had nicknamed her thong girl. <laughs> and like literally everyone called her thong girl when we first got on the island and we're allowed to talk. We're like, what's up with thong girl? Um, but yeah, so no, don't wear thong. But it was funny mm. that we all had stories about like each other for after knowing each other for 24 days. So I think that's mm -hmm. another reason why the cast got kind of close and wanted to actually know about each other was because we had these this shared kind of torture experience mm -hmm. from before. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it It's something that bonds you in a way that you yeah. never thought you would be bonded. Yeah. I think that's amazing. I mean, the the amount of time that we spent pregame was hard enough. I couldn't imagine yeah. doing it for as long as you did. Well, and, and I think you know, this is, you know, speculation or whatever, but when in the pregame, Jeff actually came to the island to welcome everyone, but mm -hmm. he was escorted by the Fijian military because he was still in a special quarantine. We were all done. But he was still masked and isolated and had to sit in a separate section and like away from everyone. And like we couldn't oh interact with God. him. And so I think something happened with him coming out where his he didn't make it to Fiji on time. And so his quarantine was pushed back. Um, and so I think that's where there's been some rumors that it was actually supposed to be like a 30 day season. And that's why it actually changed was in our pregame was so long. Wow. Um, yeah. But I mean, it was it was painful because. There were days where we didn't do anything in pregame. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I'm just envisioning Jeff walking around with a military escort, you know. <laughs> he it was literally loved that. Uh, it was literally like four or five military guys. He would get him off the boat. That. He's still masked up and everything. Like, like if so. the mask falls below the nose, they shoot, yeah. you know. Oh, so <laughs> speaking of Heather, the the one thing <laughs> that, that I uh 
the, the pregame that I had heard of her, you know, you're not allowed to talk, but sometimes mm-hmm. people will say something. Jeff comes walking down with, with the military ex, uh, escort and Heather just looks back and she goes, Oh, he's sexy. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, Oh my God. And then she said, look at his calves. <laughs> like who is this lady? That's incredible. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, he, you know, the pictures, his pregame photos, he had some muscles showing yeah. there, you know, people mm-hmm. were mostly talking about the arm muscles that stuck out. We didn't see. Yeah, the I might have posted about that. It's possible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's possible. Sexy, Jessica. Just a little bit. Listen, I had a moment. I, I will say. Jeff is an incredible human being yeah. and he's very personable. And there was a moment I, when he, when we were at pregame, I think he was a little more, obviously he had no COVID, right? So yeah. there was no military escorts and, and he could kind of come and go. The first time he came to see us, he was on a helicopter and that was a big ooh, oh moment. You know, you're yeah. like, Oh, here comes Jeff Probst jumping off a helicopter. It was great. But like, there was one moment in particular where I was in the pool and I was just like standing in the pool. In and a thong. Juggling I was coconut. not in a song. I was very careful about my bathing suit choice as to what I was going to wear at Ponderosa pregame because you're mindful of these things, right? I did not choose a thong. And there's maybe like two or three other people like around the pool or in the pool. And Jeff just comes sauntering over. And I was like, oh, my God, here comes Jeff Rose. You know, and you're like, <laughs> you're like having that moment. You're like, OK, so maintain composure. Be cool. And he walks over and he just starts like yucking it up with me, like having a conversation with me. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then all of a sudden he goes, I'm not supposed to be talking to you. And he just like walks away. <laughs> it, was like, it was like he forgot for a moment that like, oh, shit, like yeah. this is not allowed. I'm breaking the rules of pregame myself. And he's Jeff Probst. So that was incredible. I was like to see him like all of a sudden, like the wheels are turning like, oh, no, 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 this is not happening. It was a great moment. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Pre- pre-game is, it's, it's a wild experience. It's crazy. We, you do. We had a little bit different press day because obviously people weren't yeah. actually out there, mm-hmm. but there were two tents on the separate sides of the islands, a horrible blackout tents that are like a hundred degrees. Yes. And one was a party tent and one was a very strict tent. The party tent, the <laughs> handlers were like getting a little loopy and it was like whatever. And like everyone was like not talking, but making facial expressions, mm-hmm. you know, like they were opening the sides and then the yep. other tent which i wasn't in was a military tent where it's like people <laughs> were literally back to back and they're like no talking you can't do this no none of that and so people like talk about these two days about that day and like people have very different experiences it's tiffany incredible. was in the military tent she's like that was horrible <laughs> and you know the military people were the ones uh, looking at you guys doing the water challenge and the the yeah. the loopy party people were the ones at the love you camp letting them use Apparently. a stick and everything so oh my goodness These so people oh, they oh, i mean you guys have said this but the other thing that i will say is the tribe divisions i mean come on yeah, come yeah. On. i agree yeah i'm looking at the tribes i was like love you is gonna kick well, everyone's also, ass also lo- love you it's like Nasir, Nasir was the oldest one there, and he's my age. Yeah, like our oldest guy. Yeah, so it's just like what in the world? Yeah, yeah, that was not. It was not the best. I don't prefer the three tribes. I do prefer two tribes. I just because I do think that the larger group fosters so much more opportunity and stories yeah. and alliances and, and places to hide. Well, uh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I, I think it's really, really difficult when you have such a small number of people. You lose all of yeah. that. I love to see a larger group kind of coming yeah. together mm-hmm. and, and how that's going to be integrated and work together. So and, I and and you, I mean, it happened with um, Kama on you know Edge, and now it, with um, Luvu here, you you didn't get to know the people, right? right. They were they weren't going to travel, and so then it's like merge. It's like wait, who's Erica? Who right. are these people? Like, yeah. yeah, who's Erica, who ends up winning? Yeah. Right. Who's Heather, who Ricard later says in interviews could have easily yeah. won. Yeah. And we're sitting here like she clearly didn't do anything. Yeah. And but the players yeah. are like, no, she actually yeah. Yeah. did. Yeah. It's um, it's it's not it's not a great system. Yeah. 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 But it's it's also it's also what's amazing to me is how much the edit changes uh people's perception of oh, like mm-hmm. what actually happened. Yes. You know, and it's like, I think the, the biggest example of that is Xander, you know, how, um, you know, how the cast perception of him 
was so vastly different, not mm-hmm. negatively, but just from what was actually shown, where right. it kind of leaves you scratching your head being like, wait, how was he a zero vote finalist? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I and do think even, that there yeah. is some unfairness there as a viewer, because like David and I have talked about how we spend time reading the pregame interviews yeah. and kind of researching all of the players, if you will. And there are individuals that just straight up just watch the show, which I used to be one of those people. I never right. read any pregame stuff. I just watched the show and I loved it. So you're left with whatever is being presented to you in the edit and right. not all of this information that you have about this person. Yeah. And you're like, where is that person? Right. And I do think that that's rather unfair. The, the other thing that I'll say on that is for the pregame is that, you know how, I mean, I, I was very unaware that they very much portray you in a way that they want to portray you mm, from the mm-hmm. pregame material. And, you know, for people applying, they, when you send in your application, the first thing that they do is they send you that long app if they're interested to get more information about you. That's literally what they use for the web for the website. Mm-hmm. And yes, be very careful oh when you're right in there, people. Well, no, but so here's the, here's the thing. Like I was definitely trying to play up things. And like mm-hmm. in mine, it was like, you know, Penny had told me, you know, you need to prove that you know Survivor. And so mm. I gave like a library of like mm-hmm. people I would play like. And David like, Bloomberg and, was probably referenced in there. You know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And, and so it's like you're you're doing that for the audition process where it's like yeah. I'm trying to play into a character yeah. that, you know, is a, over the top. And then it's yeah. like you see this and it's like, oh, my God, that's so cringe. Listen, I would never say that. I had a very uncomfortable conversation with yeah. my casting person when we were like in L.A. before we were out. And I'm yeah. like, uh, listen, can you do me a favor? <laughs> I might have said some things in my... Uh, application i didn't know that you guys were going to publish this shit yeah. i'm going to lose my job so like can you like <laughs> yeah can you just not there's like a couple of things in there and she's like okay and i think i probably annoyed them because they were like really really like that shit's funny and i'm like it yeah. was funny if it's not uh on the internet for everybody to read yeah i i don't need that judge knowing i said that about him you know <laughs> that oh my god i'm telling you there was some stuff i was like i'm like i was reading i'm like aaron this is hysterical like reading it to my husband he's like you really wrote that i'm like it's funny and i yeah. no, i'm like mm, no i probably shouldn't have done that <laughs> i did the same thing and a couple of things they were like no we can't pull that and i was like a couple of things is like no 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 this is you, non-negotiable yeah. this is like professional <laughs> suicide right yeah. now i, I love like, you no, no, no. I, I, that was the ex- same exact moment yeah. i had where i was like oh yeah. god i just wrecked my career yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, I, there was a yeah i referenced someone by name and i was like absolutely not that cannot go anywhere that is in print oh, well yeah, yeah that's why i think you know in the pregame um you know a, a lot of people thought Ugh, brain surgeon yeah. has a high opinion of himself and evie hates men yeah. you yes. know and oh those two are gonna clash right yeah. away and what happens in the first episode boom you link up yeah. right away yeah yeah you know mm-hmm. and yeah. So, so anyone who wants to apply just know yeah. <laughs> yeah. that stuff does not stay with cbs yeah yeah oh lord well and the, the funny thing is and i think you guys i think tiffany talked about this is that you know with tiffany not supposed to be in there. Shan was supposed to be on our tribe. So it was supposed to be, mm. you know, Shan in her place. And then the uh, 40 tour that ended up being on 42 was going to be on uh, Ua. So interesting. Yeah. yeah I didn't know yeah. that part. Tiffany had mentioned that. Yeah. She was obviously the last minute because yeah. someone had tested positive for COVID, but yeah. Yeah. Shan on your tribe would have been so interesting yeah. because even as you were talking about earlier, Things change. You could come in with a plan, but then you have yeah. the other people. And I know right. Ricard has talked about like he had a certain plan, but then he comes in and there's Shan, who yeah. just everybody immediately gravitates to. Yeah. Yeah. And and then, you know, Shan and Liana wanted to get together and waited all that time. If they had been on that same tribe, yeah. you know, things I mean, yeah, they, they might not have been any better for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they would have been different. Might have been rough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right. Uh, is there anything else that we haven't hit that you want to uh, cover? I mean, it's been uh, we're, we're almost approaching here as long as you were on the show on TV. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's that cold. That's pretty cold. That oh, my goodness. No, um, no, I think 
final thoughts that I would say is that I, well, first of all, obviously you guys know, I love what you guys do. And well, it's, it's because it's like, it's that very systematic. And I think it's like, you guys acknowledge that you have the rule, be flexible, where it's like, it's not all about having the systematic right. approach, but I think it's helpful for people that are going to play or even just want to think about the game more to have like, how do you actually dissect the game? Because like I said, I kind of was harsh on people in the preseason interviews that just, I feel like a lot of people come in with no framework at all. Mm -hmm. And so I think that it's, it's very useful to have that kind of like, how are people actually playing and what do you do differently? So I think, uh, you know, for all, for, from, from a, from a prior fan, thank you for, the dissection that you guys do even with all of your tangents or i guess jessica's tangent that yeah. david doesn't really have. see look at this but, i mean jessica you're on my shit list now yeah oh okay well listen Hopefully, i was listen, just gonna i was listen. just gonna pay you a compliment on second chances you better watch out jessica <gasps> oh. may not be on the jury this time around. fighting words fighting words i will say um Thank you for playing along. I know that you weren't expecting Tiffany to be here and oh, no. I wasn't yeah. trying to take away from you at all. No, no. I just I just think the world of both you and Tiffany, I think you're both incredible human beings and I love the way that you have presented yourself and also that you're welcoming us in in the way that you do. So thank you for that. And also this guy, you know, I just got to say, I mean, the David Bloomberg thing, I'm with you on it. So, you know, we're connected <laughs> in that way too because yeah. I love the guy and I was like, who is this David Bloomberg character? Now, the difference between you and I is you learned about him before you played. I learned about yeah. him after I played. And, and you were more so, successful. <laughs> well, I know. I wish I, I, there's part of me that's like, I wish I had known these rules before I went out there. And then I don't know, maybe I wouldn't have picked a rock. I don't know. But needless to say, this is where I sit now next to David Bloomberg. And I love that I get to do this. And so to hear someone like yourself, Talking about David Bloomberg pregame, I was reading this going, oh, he's going to be dying inside. <laughs> he's just going to be loving this shit. So thank you for giving yeah. me that too, because I do think that David Bloomberg has provided a lot to the Survivor community. And people who are going to play should definitely read the rules. Maybe buy a poster if you mm -hmm. want. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm so, you guys gave me a poster. I don't even have it up. I'm, I, I'm You know, that's okay. Goodness. That's all right. I forgive you. Yeah. Well, second chances, right? Since you got to give someone a second since chance. Since you mentioned that, you know, people people say you guys don't promote the poster and the shirts enough. So you know, we waited this long. <laughs> Who says that, David? Yeah, Who everybody, says that? everybody says that. So many people um, say that. Yeah, and so we waited this long, and so I, I you know, I, I do want to, uh, you know, mention there is the, uh, the the lovely page you can go to. Uh, the Rob has a website dot com slash YX lost feed. And it's really a good thing that it's all on one page now because my computer hard drive crashed since the last time uh, we had a podcast and I lost everything, at least for now. So I don't have my normal script where I just run through everything, mm -hmm. you know, so it's nice that we have this one page that we could just refer to. It's and, like a guide. Yeah, and you can <laughs> you can subscribe to the survivor feed there. You can uh, read the the rules that we were talking about. You can print those off and put them on the back of scientific papers. <laughs> yes, you can. You can. There's a link directly to the rules poster, uh, and then of course there's the rules T-shirt. Uh, there's the checklist T-shirt. Uh, you can't see it there, but of course. Bocha, uh, you love checklists. I do. Give yes. me a checklist. Yes, and mm -hmm. there's the there's the mug that goes with that too. I have a question. Does does Tiffany know that you have rules? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should send her a poster too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure she doesn't. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she has zero idea. You know, I'm going to send wait. her a poster and I'm going to say, Dear Tiffany, <laughs> Voce thought you needed the rules. Yes, yes. Um, and so then, of course, on here, you can also uh, follow us on Twitter. You can follow me on TikTok. Uh, even though we don't have Survivor, I've been doing uh, Amazing Race TikToks. I have been doing Lots Joe, of TikToks. Joe Millionaire TikToks. Okay? So many TikToks. Um. And so, uh, and I've even gotten comments that the Joe Millionaire cast 
they are really active on Twitter. They are making the best use of their 15 minutes and they are arguing with one another. They are subtweeting one another. Uh, they are telling me I'm wrong when I TikTok about it. It's it's quite interesting. But nice. Um, yeah. And then you can subscribe to reality TV wrap ups. And of course, you should uh, subscribe to RHAP on Patreon. Join as a patron for all of the benefits that you can get from being a patron. We always go through those, um, you know, the, that there's, there's the special patron podcast. There's the patron Facebook groups, uh, patron discord, all sorts of things. And so everybody should definitely, um, you, you know, do that again, don't have my usual script in front of me. So, but the one place, the one place that everybody should remember, Rob has a website.com slash Y X lost feed. Yes. You can get and everything there. You Wait, end up I have to, I have, of- I have to make a plug here. Oh, okay. I like every it. time I tried to find the rules, it was impossible to find the rules. The rules mm. need to be easier to find David Bloomberg. <gasps> I don't run the website, but now that they're on the Y X lost feed, so all you have to do is go there, and it's literally right there. Survivor oh. 41 rules. This did not exist when I was going out there. And did there it? you go. You just oh. go right there, and there are the rules. You're right. It was more difficult new and improved. before. Yes. It is new and there improved, you go. that's for sure. I love yes. it. Now yes. everyone will be. Now everyone has no excuse. That's exactly. Right. They'll all be well-studied and ready to play the game. Exactly. And so we also want you to all follow us on Twitter. I'm at Jessica Lewis 89 and he is at David Bloomberg and Voce. I guess you aren't a big Twitter fan. I, I you know, before this, I had no social media. I created uh, you know a, what? Yeah. Same, same thing. Didn't have any, but you should consider it. Think about it. Maybe. So if you well, find Instagram. Voce and Twitter, I have an Instagram, Instagram. Okay. Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? David J. Voce. I think. There you go. David there J. Voce. That's mm-hmm. Instagram. So I'm at Jessica Lewis 89, at David Bloomberg. I have an Instagram too. It's like at Jessica Lewis 6789. So you can do that too if you want. But I prefer Twitter. Instagram's cool. No knock on you, Voce. So you should definitely follow us all. You can get all the great content that we post, including all of David Bloomberg's TikToks, because there's a lot of TikToks. They're amazing. They are amazing. (laughs) There's lots of TikToks. There's music. Lots of things happening. So yes, you should definitely follow us all. And uh, what's next, David Bloomberg? I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, I, I obviously, as Survivor 42 approaches, we will have preseason content that is closer than it seems. It's what, like a month away, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe yeah. a, a month and a few days away. Um, we will have preseason content. Um, uh, you know, the, we probably won't be doing anything for Celebrity Big Brother because that's only a few weeks long and it's going to, you know, there's going to be too much mm-hmm. going on there for. Right. For us, but but RHAP has plenty of other coverage. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to pop up into a uh, a recap in there somewhere along the line, and um, you know we'll go from there. And then Australian Survivor is coming out. I apparently it's going to be on Paramount Plus. I don't know if there's going to be a delay. I'm mm. not a hundred percent convinced it's going to be. I won't believe it till I see it. Um, I will be watching that. I. I don't think we'll be doing much podcasting about that, but who knows uh, if Sandra wins, we will definitely do another why Sandra one podcast. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So, but that's further on down. And so, yeah, we will certainly be back um, for season 42 and uh, you know, so we'll be, uh, we'll be around sooner than sooner than you can blink. Really. I love it. Speaking of season 42, mm-hmm. not to steal your thunder. No, no, no steal it. Go. Tiffany said that, you know, Jeff didn't know if they were going to be able to get 42 in. That is a lie. <gasps> that is a lie. Because what? when we were at the Sofitel about to leave, season 42 was doing their prison yard walk. So we actually saw season 42, mm. which was really surreal. We mm. were like, leave, get out. Did you tell them about all the advantages? If you see up. something that says beware. Yeah. <laughs> Grab don't it. touch it. Butterflies. You don't care. Yeah. It's fine. Broccoli. Not a thing. No, it's potato this time. Oh, you saw yeah. the preview. Oh, yeah. If a potato it. has skin and I have I, skin, I am can't. I a potato? I, listen, that don't, get me, don't, don't get me angry. Don't get me angry. More well, that's, I'm going to have to talk to Tiffany about that because that was one of the more shocking I moments. I know. I know. In addition to the machete 
Mm-hmm. Finding that out, I was like, oh, I was aghast. So I'm going to have to talk to her. Maybe Don't that worry, happened earlier. She does sometimes get time mixed up. She, <laughs> she sometimes just gets confused, period. <laughs> you had to get the one last shot in. He did. It was the he last did. checkbox on your, he uh, had, on your he, list. He's going through his checklist, <laughs> exactly. which reminds me, we have something else to check off on our list. We have we to say our thank yous. Yes. So thank you so much to, to Scott St. Pierre. <laughs> For all of the editing that he does, not only on the Why Blank Loss podcast, but all of the RHAP content. He's incredible. He works tirelessly all through the night. So thank you so much, Scott, for all of the work that you do. And also thank you to Will from America for the incredible theme song that you have created for Why Blank Lost. It's quite catchy. You should definitely check it out. So thank you so much for that, Will. And Voce, thank you so much for joining us. This was so much fun. And thank you for letting me sneak Tiffany in because ah, that I had to happen. I forgive you for that. But thank you guys. <laughs> but I need to do my thank you. Thank yes. you, Jessica. Thank you, David, because we all love this podcast and it's amazing how much time and effort you put into it. And so Thanks. thank you. Well, thank you. Guys you guys don't get enough thank recognition. Oh, well, thank you very much. We appreciate you. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. And uh, with that, I think we will uh, see everyone as we, you know, who knows, we may pop up elsewhere, but. Uh, We'll, we'll at least see everyone as we start to approach the new Survivor season. Yay! So thanks again, Voce. Thanks again, Jessica. Bye. Bye. Bye.